Vancouver had its chances against the Rangers. Nathan Lafayette hits the post here. But the Canucks came up short. Yes, this team that finished just one game over 500 in the regular season finished just one win shy of a Stanley Cup championship. Welcome everyone to one of the most beautiful cities in all the world, Vancouver, British Columbia, on a balmy January night where National Hockey League action is back and so is the news. Tonight at the Pacific Coliseum, the Western Conference champion Vancouver Canucks entertain Brett Hull, Mike Keenan, and the St. Louis Blues. And a very pleasant good evening to you, everyone. I'm Tom Meese, along with Darren Pang. And what do you know? We're back with the NHL on the deuce, Darren. A question that the Vancouver Canuck fans have been asking all year, can this 500 team, which ascended in the playoffs last year, do it again? For your favorite NHL team schedule, call 100-NHL-FAN-5. Nine months ago, the St. Louis Blues season was over. And seven months ago, Mike Keenan was king of New York with a Stanley Cup championship. But a few weeks later, Keenan was gone. The fans wanted blood. But no matter, Mike Keenan wound up in St. Louis. His mission, win a Stanley Cup. There are those who said that Keenan and St. Louis superstar Brett Hull could never coexist. But if they can, Keenan and Hull and company may wipe out the Stanley Cup Blues in St. Louis. And the big question remains here in Vancouver and all around the NHL, Darren, can Mike Keenan and Brett Hull coexist peacefully for 48 games plus playoffs? Well, without question, Mike Keenan has had some troubles in the past with superstar players. I think Brett Hull is no exception. Mike Keenan just demands that every player works hard. If last night was any indication, this relationship will be smooth. Brett Hull had two goals and also added two assists, along with newcomer linemate Greg Gilbert and Adam Creighton. This is the second goal of the game. The patience of Brett Hull, the goal scoring ability will not go unnoticed. And as long as he continues to do that for Mike Keenan, there will be no problem. Let's be honest. The reason these two guys are smiling, as they like to say in the league office, game on. NHL is back on the deuce tonight. We start our year of NHL coverage where it ended back in May. Here at the Pacific Coliseum in Vancouver, the Blues and Canucks are next. After the St. Louis Blues were swept out in the first round of the playoffs by Dallas last spring, a lot of people openly questioned the work ethic of their resident superstar, Brett Hull. When Mike Keenan came on board as coach and GM, a lot of people wondered if these two egos could mesh and get along for a full season. We spoke to Brett Hull about that question. Oh, everything's great. Uh, you know, you hear so many stories about uh, Mike Keenan. Well, don't believe any of them. He's a uh, he's a quality person, a quality coach. Uh, all he wants to do is win, and and if you're willing to put out the effort to win and uh, to play the way he wants you to play, uh, you get along just fine. At the Pacific Coliseum, Tom Meese and Darren Pang set to go, and so is Mike Keenan, one and all, as the boss of the St. Louis Blues, of course, led the Rangers to the Stanley Cup <coughs> last spring. And number 16, Brett Hull, two goals last night, and there is Curtis Joseph, who once again will be in that tonight, Darren. Well, what an outstanding goaltender Curtis Joseph is. He only had 18 shots last night in San Jose, but I think that'll be fine for Curtis Joseph in the long run. After all, he's faced the most pucks in the NHL the last three years. Kay Whitmore will be the starting goaltender for the Vancouver Canucks as play is underway for the Pacific Coliseum. And quickly, Greg Adams goes into the St. Louis Blue corner. Knocks it behind the net. <coughs> Havel Burre in the corner. Ian Linden, Burre ends up with it. Right for the shot. Joseph is holding on for dear life. Oh. Doesn't know where it is. Oh, man, that's the speed of Pavel Burre. I mean, he just <coughs> exploded from one side of the net to the other. Now, Pavel's a left-hand shot, so he's able to get a lot more on this puck as he's wrapping it around. He's able to protect the defender with his left leg and then have a real quick wraparound. Boy, it was a good thing for Curtis Joseph that he got that pillow right along the goal line. Watch Burry just take off right from here. He's got Creighton all over him. A quick little wraparound, quick little move, 
And as a goaltender, you've got to work your tail off to go to left to right and still get either the paddle of your stick or your pad down on it. So Pavel Burry, you know, last night against Dallas, Tom, he didn't have a whole lot of quality chances. This was probably the best chance he's had. 60 goals, two years in a row for Burry. Pavel accounted for 21.5% of all the Vancouver goals last year. And he almost had his first of the season right there. Sean Antosky, rugged winger for Vancouver, keeps it in the St. Louis zone. Tim Hunter. Does as well. Ticks on the ice. John McIntyre. Isolation. He's got no stick, okay? That's a ticket in, in the ticking. corner. Okay, just got it. Picks up a loose stick. Back to center we come. And the St. Louis Blues carried into the Vancouver zone for the first time where Denise Chasse is not squalling by Gerald Diddick. And the Canucks clear it down the ice, but icing will be the call as Rick Zombo touches up for St. Louis. 1904, still to go here in the first period. No score. Well, Kate Whitmore had a fun time during the uh, lockout. He he got better at basketball, of all things, trying to keep up his uh, his fitness level and his athletic ability. So he turned to the hoops and the hardwood floors. Kate Whitmore really did not play a whole lot last year behind number one goaltender Kirk McLean. But boy, did these guys have a great relationship together. I mean, Vancouver has really loved Kate Whitmore. In fact, so much that they allowed John Van Beaver to escape them in the expansion draft just last year. Meanwhile, Ron Smith will be behind the bench because of the fact that head coach Rick Lee will be suspended again for the next two games as a result of a preseason altercation. Gina Wojcik also is out of the lineup. And Ron Smith, a former assistant with the New York Rangers, 21 years at coaching, so he's got a lot of experience back there. But uh, never fear, Rick Lee's in the building. He's on the headset upstairs. And he'll be relaying instructions to Ron Smith and the brain trust of the Vancouver Canucks. Yuri Slager for Vancouver dumps it into the St. Louis zone. Slager in the corner behind the net. Mike Pekka, a recent call-up to the Syracuse Crunch of the American Hockey League, had the lone Vancouver goal last night. Pekka in front of the net, couldn't get a stick on this one. He deflected the goal last night and was trying to do the same thing there. Pekka, number 33. This is Sergio Momesso in the corner. Martin Jelena behind the net. Looks to center. Pekka had his stick tied up. And Yuri Slager. And here come the St. Louis Blues. Vancouver's had the territorial advantage early on. Vitaly Karamnov has bumped off the puck at center, and this is Slager. Cut off there by Al McKinnis, the former Calgary Flame. Up with it for St. Louis is Adam Creighton. Had a big night in San Jose with one goal and three assists last night. Kay Whitmore's clearing attempt. Hits one of the Blues. Ends up deep in the Vancouver zone. The shot by Creighton is a score. Adam Creighton, his second goal of the young season. Adam Creighton found himself alone for probably three or four seconds right in the red zone. This is where you get the great chances in the game of hockey. And Adam Creighton, a big six foot five, lanky centerman. What a start he's off to. Five points in two. In a, heck, we're not even through two games just yet. And Adam Creighton bags home. A nice pass from Greg Gilbert, former teammate in Chicago. With that long reach, was able to drag the puck from to the left side of his body, drag it all the way into his feet. That changed the angle a little bit, and then fired it home past the glove side of goaltender Kay Whitmore. So the first great chance of the game for the Blues ends up turning on the red light. Well, Adam Creighton buried it. Keep this in mind. One of the great trades in the NHL, one-sided trades, may end up to be the one St. Louis pulled off with Tampa Bay there. Adam Creighton for Tom Tilly. And so far, Creighton is producing a ton. One of the great? <laughs> One of the most effective okay. trades from yeah. a St. Louis standpoint. Well, it certainly can be, and we'll get into that in a second. Watch Gilbert. He's at the bottom part of your screen. He just made the pass. Where the heck is everybody? You see there was three Vancouver Canucks on the left side of your screen, one at the top part, but two of them were caught to the left side. That allowed Adam Creighton to be all alone high in the slot. He made no mistake on that shot. Face off to the left of Whitmore in the Vancouver zone. A shot from Zombo from the right point. Stick to side by Whitmore. Behind the net, this is Craig Janney on for his first shift of the night. Zombo and Duchesne at the point. Zombo's shot is wide. Gary Lehman, recent signee with the Vancouver Canucks, clears the zone, but only momentarily. Played two and a half minutes of the first period. One nothing St. Louis. That's a Tikkanen. He tried to put one in front on Whitmore, but Whitmore sticked to the side. Puck finally comes out to center for Gary Lehman. And Lehman sends it into the St. Louis players bench. Whistle for a faceoff. 17-17 to go in the first. The official on that goal, Creighton from Gilbert and McInnes. Well, we told you Rick Lee was in the building. And we don't lie. He's not behind the bench. He's way upstairs with a headset on. Rick Lee, as we said, suspended for two more games. And he spent the last three years as an assistant to Pat Quinn. 
Don't forget, he was a Hartford coach. He had the best ever winning percentage in Hartford Whaler history, Rick Lee did. So he's just excited, really. He will be excited to get back at it and get behind the bench. I'm sure a lot of people were thinking that Pat Quinn would go behind the bench, but you know, Vancouver decided and Pat Quinn decided that, heck, right now, let's, let's wash this slate clean here. And there's Rick Lee on the left side of your screen, Pat Quinn on the right side. Pat Quinn was wearing three hats here. Mm. And he was the president, he was the general manager, he was the coach. But Rick Lee suspended for three games as a result of a preseason incident in which Gino Ojik left the bench in an altercation. Ojik then, meanwhile, because they prorated the suspensions because of the shortened season, Ojuk six games, and this will be his second game that he served. He served last night against Dallas. Play back on to the Vancouver shot, and a glove save by Whitmore, and a shot from Bill Holder. Bill Holder let her rip from the left point, and the St. Louis defenseman is denied by Whitmore's glove hand. I'm not sure if this will come as a surprise to anybody, but Bill Holder can fire the puck everywhere he's been. He, he, he just can plane out, shoot the puck hard. And that one, even though it was from far out, he got excellent wood on it. The key for Kay Whitmore there was the fact that there was nobody in front of him. There was no screen set up. So Bill Holder just let her fly. And that's one of the things the St. Louis Blues will do under Mike Keenan. Make sure you get the puck on net and make sure you cause havoc in front of that net. Good save by Whitmore. Adam Creighton's second goal of the young season has the St. Louis Blues off one zip early here in Vancouver. Peter Stastny will try the face off with McIntyre. McIntyre wins this one. Dinick to Yerke Lume. Lume tried to hit a teammate at center, couldn't get there. Sean Antosky does get there, but icing will be the call. 16.48 to go in the first. <laughs> Welcome back to Pacific Coliseum in Vancouver. On the deuce, Tom Mees and Darren Pang with you. ESPN 2's inaugural coverage of the National Hockey League regular season beginning tonight. St. Louis leading at one zip. Pavel Dury at center for Vancouver to Greg Adams. Adams dumps in the corner. Curtis Joseph wandering way out of his net. And for the St. Louis Blues on it is Adam Creighton. And a water bottle hits the ice and a hooking penalty going to be called by referee Don Koharski. First penalty of the game so far is going to go to Murray Barron of the St. Louis Blues. And it's a hooking call. Don Koharski wearing number 12, the head referee for this game tonight. And Vancouver's power play. Meanwhile, a mystery. And last, yeah, well, I mean, in last night's game, they were one for four, and Mike Peck actually scored the game tying goal. So one for four in the power play last night. Here's the situation. You saw Linden trying to forecheck, and a little hook along the uh, net, the back of the net. And that was for Murray Barron, and that's the reason for this first power play of the game. Well, the Canucks had the worst power play in the NHL during the regular season last year at home. They had the best power play in the league on the road. Let's we'll see what happens here. Lindley with the set rebound. Lindley gets wide on the glove side. Burry in the corner. Got Lume and Jeff Brown manning the points. Double team, so he dumps it to Lume. Lume bounces one over to Jeff Brown. Taken out of the play there. Into the corner, Trevor Linden. Behind it, and it's Burry. Sergio Momesso has it at his feet, gets it to Yerke Lume. Lume to an open Brown. Fans getting a bit impatient as they always do with the home team. On the power play, they want you to shoot, shoot, shoot. Play 45 seconds of this power play, only one shot on goal. Guy Carbono can't quite clear the zone for St. Louis. Gray behind the net. The Guinness is on him. Finally, the Blues are able to control and dump it down the ice. Nice little chip play by Al McGinnis on his backhand. He was able to get it to his partner, and they were able to clear the zone. Al McGinnis doing a lot of jumping while, while on the penalty kill for the Blues. Blue A sends it into the St. Louis zone again. Jeff Cortnell is on, along with Cliff Ronning. Ronning has it. Ronning in the slot. He dumps it into the corner as his stick was held up. Oh, behind the net comes to Cortnell, and this is Adam Creighton with it. Steve Duchesne trying to whack it around the boards, ended up hitting a body behind the net. Whitmore way out of his net, put it on the stick of Brett Hull, but Hull couldn't get a shot off. Here's Lume at center. 20 seconds to go in the Vancouver power play. And a whistle for an offside with 14.46 to go in the period. Remember Gary Lehman? Yeah. He's making the Canadian tour right now. Gary Lehman. Just signed a two-year contract with the Vancouver Canucks. 
Remember, he had a Stanley Cup championship in Montreal back in 92-93. They were hoping he can rekindle the magic that brought him 50 goals while playing for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So far in Canada, he's played for Montreal, Calgary, Toronto, and Vancouver. You got something against the States? <laughs> I think he's very happy right now to be given an opportunity, to be honest with you. And he, he wants to get back what he had and didn't get to play a whole lot last year and was injured a little bit uh, during the lockout, as a matter of fact. So he's fortunate that he, he got back and he's injury-free right now. Well, St. Louis, Greg Gilbert controls the puck in his own zone, squirts out to center in five seconds. Murray Barron will be out of the box, and the teams will be even. Yuri Slinker skates it into the blue zone, tries to center to right, puts out in front, Joseph is down, and so is Gary Lehman. Lehman had a great chance in front. Here's Murray Barron the other way. Stick to the corner by Whitmore. High off the glass, and Jeff Portnell has it for Vancouver. 1-0 St. Louis. Cliff running at center. Oh. Ronin gets around the defenseman Zombo and snaps a wrister. It's wide to the stick side. Craig Johnson, a recent call up. Off his stick, back to Ronin. In front, Cornell, save Joseph. Rebound, save Joseph. Jeff Cornell goes to the corner. He and Zombo fight for it. A quick start to this one. Peter Stastny behind the net. Johnson has lost his helmet. Boy, did Johnson ever do a good job on Gary Lehman. Johnson, very physical in front of the net on that play, made sure he took the man. St. Louis has been very physical so far in front of their goaltender, Curtis Joseph. Adam Creighton carries into the zone offside. Whistle stops playing with 13.34 to go on the first. One zip on Creighton's goal, St. Louis. Creighton now two goals in his last two games, but Vancouver had a couple of pretty good chances around the goal mouth, and Curtis Joseph had to go left to right in making that stop later on. One of the guys, Gary Lehman, was the guy that was busting in towards the net. Not only did Creighton play for Mike Keenan in Chicago, he also played for the Blues associate coach Ted Sater when Sater was the head man in Buffalo. So Adam Creighton was well known by the Blues coaching staff. There's one in on Joseph from center ice, sticks it aside. Johnson is in the corner. They make that Bill Holder in the corner for St. Louis. He and Mike Pekka, pair of 33, is going at it. Pekka loses his balance. Holder comes up with it. Adam Creighton off the boards to center. Gerald did it. To center to Pekka. Over to Greg Adams. Adams on the left wing. Doug Glitzner cuts him off for St. Louis. Red Hall back the other way now. Sweeps it to center ice for a breaking against Tikkanen. Tikkanen has it poked checked away. Loose puck at center for Pekka. He's one on one. The shot is partially blocked by Barron. And Curtis Joseph shoots it to the boards, and here come the Blues. This is Tardif, Patrice Tardif with a shot. It's the leg of Jeff Brown. Back out to Al McGinnis at center ice. A lot of new names on the St. Louis roster, Darren. There's plenty of new names, and you know one thing that most of the guys have in common, Tom, is they've won Stanley Cups. Mm. This is very familiar with what Mike Keenan has done in the past. Bring guys in that have won Stanley Cups and won Canada Cups. Patrice Tardif and Sean Antosky vying for possession. Into the corner. With it now is Brent Hedekin, the former blue, to Antosky. There's a lot of former blues here on this Vancouver roster. Right out in front, Tardif has to direct it behind his own net. Here's taking it at center. Off his stick, back to Al McGinnis. Murray Barron. Vitaly Karamna keeps it on its way to the Vancouver zone where it's Hennigan behind his net. Off the boards, Karamnov intercepts the clearing pass. Tony Twist shoots and scores! Tony Twist, the former Quebec Nordique, is St. Louis at 2 nothing lead. That was a real good hard-low shot by Tony Twist, not known for his goal-scoring ability, but that is a perfect shot, and it was all as a result of a bad clear and a poor defensive play by the Vancouver Canucks in allowing Vitaly Karamnov to get control of the puck. I think it was Brett Hedekin, the former St. Louis Blue, that was trying to clear it, but you see the hook by Stashny? Stashny got his, his hook right on the right elbow, and that allowed Karamnov to put the puck right on Twist's tape, and Twist just let it go low and hard to the stick side. I'm not even sure if goaltender Kay Whitmore saw that puck at all. He reacted a little bit late, but nonetheless, a good start by the St. Louis Blues, and on home ice, not a very good one for Vancouver. Sloppy play in their own zone. A twist, a free agent, known basically for his uh, penalty minute totals with the Quebec Nordiques. Rifled a shot there in his first goal of the season as the Blues on top two to nothing. It does go to show you, though, Tom, that players are perceived as tough guys because they go through the system that way. Every one of these guys can handle a puck. You give them a little bit of time, they can shoot the puck. 
but I'm sure Tony Twist nonetheless is thrilled that the red light went on. Pavel Burry just weighs at it at center ice. Steve Duchesne goes back in his own end. Duchesne has it taken away there by Momesso, and he and Momesso get sticks up. Pavel Burry, the shot stick save there by Yuri Slager. He took the shot, Joseph the save. Shots on goal even at six so far, halfway through the first period. Pavel Burry, the Carmino's checking him. Well, the Blues jumped out quick last night in San Jose, and they're out in front by two tonight. Trevor Linden at center. As it's taken away by Carmino, who's playing without his stick, and a whistle stops playing with 10.34 left in the first. Two nothing, St. Louis. Welcome back to Pacific Coliseum, where the St. Louis Blues have a two nothing lead. Check out this. The rings of the uh, St. Louis Blues. Now, look at that. There is 14 total right there, including Mike Keenan's Stanley Cup ring. And by the way, the players, Greg Gilbert, Tikkanen, and Keenan, received their rings on Wednesday. And I guess they were thrilled with the look of them. I wonder if they were COD. See on the inside of that ring, 1940 is scratched out. That's what I understand. Uh, a little slash mark outside. That's great. Ghosts of the past. Now in Detroit, they're saying 1955. That's the team with the next longest streak without winning the Cup. That was a terrific start they got off to last night on home ice against the Blackhawks in a 4-1 victory. Here's Cliff Ronning for Vancouver. The Canucks traditionally not a good come-from-behind team. They're going to have to be tonight. Mm. They trail it to zip. Havel Burry in the corner. Jeff Portnell fans on a shot. Ronning can't control it. And it's Murray Barron for St. Louis. Yerke Lume at center. Right through the legs there of Courtnell. Al McGinnis, the former flame, up to Craig Jenny. Brett Hull quickly to Asa Tikkanen. Tikkanen runs up, and he's wide glove side. Solid positioning by St. Louis right now, and one of the things Blues management was happy about last night in their victory against San Jose was the fact that there was a good positional play coming through the transitional zone, through the neutral zone. Defensively, they were a little bit sloppy running around, but offensively, all, all forwards playing their positions real well. You know what impresses me about that Stanley Cup ring list? None of those participants were on this squad last year. None of them. Eight new faces in the lineup. Thirteen faces gone out of the lineup for St. Louis. At center, it's Pekka. Pekka with Martin Jelena cutting in the net. Can't get the puck to him. As Holder took Jelena out of the play and ticket it. Clears the zone to center. Only momentarily, Pekka is on it. Brown over to Hedekin. Jelena at center. Peter Stastny on him, the ageless wonder from Czechoslovakia. Lidstra, I should say, the former Czechoslovakia. Over to Dave Babich. He's got a few miles on him himself. Babich sends in. Icing will be the call on Vancouver as Duchesne touches up with 8.33 to go here in the first period. Steve Duchesne. Y you notice something? Well, we'll this game, in just you a bet. Islanders 2 to 1. Elsewhere today in the NHL, the Rangers win their first game, beating Montreal 5 2. Anaheim beats Winnipeg 4 to 3 in Winnipeg. And our score here in Vancouver. The Blues lead the Vancouver Canucks 2 to nothing. The only other game ongoing at this hour is the Leafs and Sharks down at San Jose. All right, play back on in the Vancouver zone. Steve Duchesne lofting one in towards the goal, but hits traffic in front. Only one penalty in the first period so far. And that was not capitalized on by the Vancouver Canucks. Don Kolharski, your referee tonight. Rick Zombo without a stick. Off his skate right in front of the St. Louis goal. Joseph took care of that. But the Canucks keep it in. Zombo still without a stick. Looks like a linebacker trying to block somebody out there. And finally, St. Louis gets possession. Snasty at center to Karamba. Vitana Karamba back to Peter Stastny. Oh, we got a heavyweight ball back in the Vancouver zone. And Toski and Tony Twist. Two number 18s are going to go at it in two heavyweights. Two guys that have dropped the mitts before. This is what you would call a respected battle. If you're going to get a fight, have the two guys going. And Toski looks like he got in a little bit of a right. Well, Twist has his helmet off. You better look out. And now the linesman will break it up. Linesman tonight are Jay Sharers and Brad Lazarowicz. Well, Don Cherry's in the building tonight. This will make him happy. 7.50 to go in the first period. Tempers heating up in Vancouver. 
just back on here at the Vancouver Pacific Coliseum with Darren Pang. I'm Tom Mees and a couple of penalties handed out there to Antosky and Twist. Well, Twist already has a goal in this game. Meanwhile, Antosky, that's his second fight in as many games last night against Dallas. Their respective tough guy, Shane Churla, sort of goaded Antosky into fighting, but Shane Churla didn't drop the mitt. So before the puck was dropped in a faceoff, Antosky dropped his gloves. So he was given a match penalty and ejected from the game. That happened in midway through the contest. So Antosky's got two and two so far in the early season. Face off of the Vancouver zone with the Canucks trailing two nothing. Linden and Adam Creighton will buy for it. Linden knocks it to the corner for Gerald Dinner. Intercepted by Greg Gilbert. I'll tell you, the Canucks are really getting careless tonight with clearing passes in their own zone. And it's cost them a couple of times tonight. Now they get it to center to Pavel Bure. Bure with Didick on the right wing. Didick puts one through the crease area. Raking was Linden. He couldn't catch up to it. Headman pass to Brad Gilbert off his stick. And Lume touches up icing on the St. Louis Blues. Time to check out the Miller Lite League leaders. And let's go back to last season. The goal scoring league leaders in the NHL. Pavel Burry with 60 of them. Fred Hall right behind him. Sergei Fedorov, Dave Andrichuk, and Brendan Shanahan, who is not here tonight for the Blues. And perhaps we should explain why. Well, Shanahan has a virus and uh, was having some sort of troubles. You remember in the original training camp, Brett Hall also had a virus as well. Both these guys, there's Brett giving a little grin. He's always got a grin on his face. You really have to love his attitude. And he is, he, you know, you know, you believe me, you don't believe, but he's thrilled to be there. He's, he's thrilled with the situation. He wants to play well. He was the guy in last night's game against the San Jose Sharks that had the jump that was really letting the guys go. Let's get going. And the quick, sh the quick shifts and everything that Mike Keenan believed in. So far, so good for Mike Keenan and Brett Hull. Left running for Vancouver. Looks to center. Jazz tops over the stick of Brett Hennigan. Here comes Johnson back for St. Louis, but a whistle by Koharski. And I believe we're going to have a couple of minor penalties to Litster of St. Louis and Jeff Cortnall of Vancouver. Happening behind the play near the St. Louis net. And we'll have some four on four hockey for the first time tonight. Four on four means there's going to be an awful lot of ice time. Take a look at Jeff Cortnall. You see that little band aid on his nose? We'll get into that in a second. Here's the, here's the situation right in front of the net. You see Litster, mm. the former Vancouver Canuck. Last year on the Stanley Cup champion, New York Rangers. You see right through the crack there, you see the Breathe Right is the name of the Band-Aid that's on his nose and allows them to breathe easier. That is exactly what it is. It was used first by Herschel Walker in the National Football League. And now a ton of hockey players are using this. And I tried it before the game and it works. You really breathe clear. Nice. If you got a wife or a husband that snores all the time, I tell you, this will really solve it. Breathe Right is the name of the product. External nasal dilator. And no drugs, no nothing. It just literally opens up, opens up your, your nose and your nostrils. It just, there's a plastic insert and it opens up and guys say you can breathe just a whole heck of a lot better. Well, I gotta take one home because my wife is always telling me I snore like an elephant. Get one of these suckers, it'll work good for you. <laughs> but will it get you out of the penalty box? No, you'll have to sit for another one minute and 50 seconds if you're Jeff Cornell. Face off in the St. Louis zone. Linden controls it. Pavel Bure just lost control in the slot area. Bure gets it over to Linden quickly. Back to Jeff Brown. Shot is blunted there at the point. And Pavel Bure taken down by Murray Barron. Holding the call on Barron. And Vancouver will have the man advantage. Second penalty of the game for Murray Barron. Second power play opportunity for the Vancouver Canucks. They're 0 for 1 so far with the man advantage. And I got to tell you, that first power play for Vancouver wasn't very impressive. Nothing much was happening right there. But Murray Bannerman was complaining about this holding call. It happened behind the play a little bit. And Pavel Burry was going behind the net on a loose puck. And Barron just sort of reached in and sort of grabbed him, trying to slow down the process for Pavel Burry. As they discuss things, Jeff Brown, number 22, will be a key on that power play with Pavel, of course. The key for Pavel any time is just shooting the puck, getting that puck on net, because he really can shoot it hard. I don't think he gets enough credit for how hard he shoots the puck. Well, the Toronto Maple Leafs in San Jose tonight. We'll update that score for you in a moment. The Canucks are on the power play. And Come another on. whistle by Koharski, and a cross-check has been called. Heck is going on here. There is Toronto leading a one-zip. You saw... And a cross-check will nullify the man advantage for Vancouver. 
Who's going off? Pavel Burry looks like he's going off. Well, the Blues, Barron complained to Koharski that Burry was acting bit when the penalty to Barron was called. And a few seconds later, Burry is sent off. Last night's game against Dallas, the fine young rookie, Mike Kennedy for the Dallas Stars, got caught trying to trip up Pavel. Pavel made a great dive, and uh, it ended up that the Vancouver Canucks tied the game on the power play. Pavel's very good at that, but he laid some lumber back on the St. Louis Blues with a cross check. 6.28 to go in the first period. 2-0 in favor of the St. Louis Blues, and now we're reduced to three on three. You talk about open ice. Here's Trevor Linden. Gets the puck over to Yerke Lope. The shot hits the leg of Al McGinnis. Into the corner. Never got in on Joseph. Curtis Joseph faced only 19 shots all last night in San Jose. Linden in the corner. He's taken down by Brett Hall. Fans want a penalty. Nothing called there. And Hall has his skate locked up with Linden. And they just now get loose. Duchesne into the Vancouver zone. E. McGinnis and Hall. And McGinnis passes it out to center. Three on three. It's almost like these guys are lonely out there. This is pod hockey. This is fun. A lot of teams, and I know Mike Keenan, he practices this all the time. Foot changes in three on three hockey. With it now is Adam Creighton's got one of the two St. Louis goals. Takes a hard hit. Cliff riding at center. Riding into the St. Louis zone. Another former blue. He'll cruise back out to center. And carry it in again. Riding with a shot. Joseph goes down and makes the save. Curtis Joseph forced to go down low to stop little Cliff Ronnie. You have to love Cliff Ronnie. Just signed a new contract here. He's born and raised in the Vancouver area. What he did on that play was he had nothing going in the zone, so he decided to back up again and get some more speed and try to get the St. Louis Blues off guard. Ronnie did that. Now, this shot is from a, a pretty tough angle to score on. You see there's not much net to shoot on, and Curtis Joseph played that real well in getting down in the butterfly. Bill Holder controls the face up for St. Louis. In 10 seconds, we'll be back to four on four. Here's Essa Tikkanen. Tikkanen, motors at center. He'll wind up and take the shot. And down goes Whitmore to make the save. Five minutes to go in the period. We're back to four on four. Cliff Ronning carries into the St. Louis zone. Trying to hit Cortno with a perfect pass. It was broken up there by Tikkanen. Tikkanen, Brown lines him up. For Vancouver. Cardinal can't get to it in the corner. Back out of the box is Barron. The Blues have the extra man, but only for three seconds because here comes Pavel Burry. Patrice Tardy carries into the zone. He's tied up by Hennigan. And back comes running. Burry is ahead of the pack, but they can't get him to pop. Good defensive play by Duchesne. If he's not there pinching in like he is, and like he did, just did, Pavel Burry was all alone on a feed from Cliff Ronnie. Vitaly Karamov in the corner, taken out of the play there. Mike Pekka for Vancouver. Craig Jenny behind the Vancouver net. Sarek pass in front, and down on the ice is Karamov, and a holding call going to be called. I think it's on Slager. Yeah. Yeah, it's on Slager, number 24 for Vancouver, and it's a holding call. So St. Louis will go on their first power play of the contest. 4-0-1 left to go here in the first period, and the Blues already have a 2-0 lead. A little bit of action in front of Kay Whitmore. And Slager's to the right of your screen. He's moving into the center right now, and that is clearly, that's as good as holding can get right there. Grab a guy by the forearm, give him the forearm shiver, and then grab him down. That's a penalty. Reminder, more hockey on the news for the NHL on Wednesday. We'll be at the new United Center in Chicago as the Blackhawks. Open up their home season against the Edmonton Oilers, one of the young up-and-coming teams in the NHL. Edmonton, Chicago, Wednesday, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. Edmonton with a victory over Anaheim in their opener. Chicago beaten at Detroit in their opener last night. And the two clubs taking time out here. 4 one to go here in the first period. Didn't see who called that timeout. I stand corrected. That was not a timeout. They're taking timeout while uh, some commercial outlets do some business. One of the things that Mike Keenan never does, 
is practice the power play. He really doesn't. He doesn't put a lot of emphasis. He feels that if there's some set play that you use time and time again, teams are going to know it. He tells the guys to go out there, respond. Brett Hall said before this game, we're going to shoot the puck a lot because their power play last night, quite frankly, wasn't very good against the San Jose Sharks. Lose control of face off to Shane for the left point. And fanning on a clearing pass. And another penalty being called here. Adam Creighton and Gerald did it getting in it. Looks like Creighton's going off for St. Louis. Creighton had dropped the gloves, and his main competitor he was looking at was Gerald Diddick. And somehow Creighton, he was a little, maybe a little premature, but he, he just dropped the mitts down. Maybe, it, you know, I didn't actually see it. Oh, he also got a misconduct penalty as well. Unsportsmanlike conduct and roughing. A double minor for Creighton. So there he is in the slot. Now, Diddick could give him a little bit of a shot. Oh, Creighton thought that Diddick was going to drop the mitts. Diddick had no intentions whatsoever of dropping his gloves. And, uh, hey, that happens. That happens a lot. You sort of want to hold on to the laces of those mitts just a little bit longer, and you won't get caught like that. Creighton has one of the goals for the St. Louis Blues in this game. Second goal of the season. Four-point night last night against the Sharks. It's a big loss for them. He's a big part now of the St. Louis Blues team. I know it's early, but he's very good in front of the net because he's so big. You got Creighton now in the box for the better part of four minutes. And of course, Slager is in there for Vancouver, so it's four on four again. Yerke Lume in the corner, and the puck leaves the playing surface. Another face up coming up in the Vancouver zone. One of the additions to the St. Louis Blues in the offseason has to take it. Somehow, these guys always get their same number. I mean, go figure. Issa always gets that number 10, war number 10 with Edmonton, of course. Five Stanley Cup rings, four of them with the Edmonton Oilers. One last year with the New York Rangers. He will help any team, anywhere, any place, any level, just because of what he brings to the team in terms of his feistiness and the fact he's a terrific two-way hockey player. Face on controlled by Dave Babich of the Vancouver Canucks. Babich over to Yerke Lume. Lume at center. Carries into the St. Louis zone. Hit from behind there by Duchesne. And the Blues break out at center. Taken it. Taken and winds and takes the shot and it's wide of the glove side. And Taken and gets a glove in the face of Jeff Cortnell. Nothing called there. Something will be called here. <laughs> Koharski isn't taking anything. No, he's calling a ton of penalties right now, and really there's there's no flow to this hockey game because of that. Cordnell. Yeah, Cordnell's going to go off, and there's just because of the past, Tikkanen and just come constantly and consistently was on top of him, and sure enough, Tik does what he does best. He gets a guy so sour at him that he's going to do something. <laughs> there's a left little shot by Cordnell to originate the play. Now, now Tik's going to go back. Now, here's the yapping part of Tik. Here we go. Little yapping, little yapping. Bang, and that was nothing, too. There was nothing to, to that for Cortinel. I mean, he really didn't do anything. It was the great fall by Tikkanen. Earlier than that, Cortinel probably should have got caught yeah. with that right hand and second penalty of the game for Cortinel. I should correct myself as well. Before that, St. Louis had had a seven-second power play. Not very much, but this will be their, their third power play chance for them. Oh, right four now, on three, yep. You've got two Canucks in the box. you got Cortinel in there, along with Yuri Slager. And for the St. Louis Blues, off is Adam Creighton. He still has three minutes, 12 seconds to go in his double minor. So it's four on three right there, and in favor of St. Louis for the next minute four. Three minutes to go here in the first period. Al McGinnis up to Steve Duchesne. Duchesne carries in onside. Brett Hull, Janney is down low. Kay Whitmore behind his own net. Hull is right on him. He's got to get rid of it. Kay Whitmore has been an adventure handling the puck early on. Now, good play there, though, by Kay because he had room right up the middle. Here's Duchesne with a shot well wide. Janney back to McGinnis. Red Hull's got Duchesne open. Instead, it comes out to McGinnis. Janney. Four on three advantage for the Blues. Duchesne. McGinnis winds up and takes it wide. Duchesne again. 12 seconds left in the four on three situation. Red Hall at the circle. McGinnis 
Hull lets her rip, hits the legs of Diddick, still in the zone. Again, a shot hits the leg of Adams, and it connects clear just as Jerry Slager comes out of the box. Almost on the stick of Slager. Now it's four on four. Here's Johnson for St. Louis. Off the leg of Brown into the corner. Ray Johnson tries to kick it to Carbidal, comes out to Holder. On the stick of Slager. Murray couldn't catch up to it. Slager does. And a whistle stops play with 134 to go in the period. Well, Pavel Bure has not had a whole lot of room to maneuver. He hasn't been able to generate the great speed that he has. I mean, last season he had nine points in four games against the Blues. Pavel Bure, though, before this, this shortened season started, there was a contract dispute as to what exactly was guaranteed monies in the contract that he signed last year. Well, Pavel Bure didn't show up for the first couple of days and then did show up. And that's good because he's trying to patch up some public relations stuff. But Pavel Bury and the Vancouver Canucks have $1.5 million in escrow, and they will work this out. And, and if it has to be, they'll go to, they're will go they going to go to court and make sure that the right decision is made. And if the Canucks lose that, they'll give them the money. But if not, they're keeping the money. Almost a turnover to Vancouver's home with 120 left to go in the period. And finally out to center, Brett Hedekin carries into the St. Louis zone. Shot saved, Joseph. Carbonell clears it for St. Louis. And now the Blues are down a man for the next one minute and nine seconds as the double miner still has that to run to Adam Creighton. And coming up in our first intermission, the Sports Smash will get you up to date on all the scores and highlights in pro sports today and college sports as well and an analysis of the first period. That's coming up. Our first intermission, just one minute, three seconds of playing time away. See the jerseys of the St. Louis Blues, folks. I know in case you turned on the TV and you're wondering who the heck is the team with the red on them, that's the new jersey, the new look for the St. Louis Blues. See the socks? Red from three-quarters of the way down, and those neat little stripes right about the kneecap. A couple of the players had asked us before the game, I said, did you see our jerseys yet? What do you think of those things? And uh, some of them are saving their comments, but I, quite frankly, I, I like them. And there's a good look at Al McGinnis. And, uh, boy, he was a four-time runner-up to the Norris Trophy for the best defenseman. He is a good one, boy. He really is a good one. And imagine on the power. Imagine being the goalie for, against on this team in practice. You got Al McGinnis and Brett Hull. You got those guys shooting pucks at you all the time. Lord, there goes the hair. 0 for three on the power play tonight for Vancouver, and they're out of once again trailing by two. Mention those uniforms, Darren. As long yeah. as they don't touch the blue note, they can do anything uh, else they want. Oh, that stays the same. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the one common thing. I like it. I'll, I'll reserve opinion. I want to see the home uniforms. Road unis look pretty nice. I'll give you that. Jeff Brown tries to shoot it into the corner. St. Louis clears it under a minute to go here in the first period. Goals by Adam Creighton and Tony Twist have St. Louis on top. Whitmore leaves it for Brown. Two are not doing much in the last part of this period, but as I say that, here comes Pavel Burry setting up top of the circle. Down low to Brown, less than 15 to go in the period. Jeff Cortnell tries to center. St. Louis clears it in the person of Gilbert. And that should pretty much do it for the first period of play. Smattering of booze from the less than sellout crowd here at Pacific Coliseum as the horn sounds ending the first period. Shots on goal, 8-7 in favor of Vancouver, but Curtis Joseph didn't let any of those eight shots pass him by. And the Vancouver Canucks skate to their locker room, trailing Curtis Joseph and the Blues to zip. The sports match is coming your way next after this commercial break. First period is history of our new season on the news. St. Louis leading it 2 to nothing. January 9 in Vancouver, British Columbia. Welcome back for the second period. Tom Mees and Darren Pang inside the Pacific Coliseum. 2-0 St. Louis as we get set for the second period. You know the Blues underwent an intensive camp recently at Vail, Colorado under the new head coach and GM Mike Keenan. We asked him about this team's work ethic. Attitude towards winning, which is really positive for us. I think the addition of the six cup winners on the club over a year ago is going to make a huge difference in terms of shaping the commitment of the club and also the experience that you need to win the Stanley Cup. One thing about Mike Keenan, I tell you, he gets one team in a direction. 
I was with Mike when he took us midway through the season, wasn't happy with the Chicago Blackhawks and how they were approaching every single contest. So where does he take us? To Notre Dame to find the spirit of the Golden Domers and Lou Holtz and the whole thing. And man, we have a good time over there. Nice little town and everybody had a fun time in Notre Dame. But, you know, Mike Keenan believes in getting everybody together. He'll take this team on probably three or four different journeys throughout the year. They'll have up, ups and downs, but he, he does like to spend the money and take the time and go to little cities here or there. Go to Whistler, go to go to Vail, Colorado or whatever, and make sure everybody's on the same page. And one thing that Mike Keenan stressed in that conversation was the Stanley Cup winners that he brought over to the St. Louis Blues. Well, that Vail, Colorado training camp over the last week or so, he, he stressed to me it was at 10,000 feet above sea level so that these guys would be in probably the best condition of any team in the NHL if they could stand his workouts at that elevation. And uh, so far, they're playing with a lot of jump in their stride in the first game and one period of the season. All right, Curtis Joseph in the net for the Blues. Hey, Whitmore, his opposite number for Vancouver. Still six seconds left on the double minor to Creighton, so uh, that will be of little consequence. He'll be out in three more seconds. And now the teams are back to five aside. Goals by Creighton and Tony Twist have St. Louis on top two zip. Adams to Burray, a quick one and a Joseph rebound. Adams on the doorstep, couldn't get a stick on it. Shot taken from the point by Brown. And the save made by Curtis Joseph, and here's Greg Gilbert back the other way. Gilbert to McGinnis, a uh, stick save by Whitmore to the corner. Trevor Linden, cross ice to Jeff Brown. Up to Adams, at Burray on the right wing. Murray Barron and Pavel Burray go in the corner. Barron controls it to Gilbert. Didick back to Yerke Lume. Oh, a giveaway to Craig Jenny. Winds up and shoots in a save by Whitmore. Again, very sloppy by Vancouver. The two goals that St. Louis has scored has been a result of turnovers inside the blue line. And again, Jenny had a very good chance right there. Bucket center. Here is Jenny trying to get it to Patrice Tardy. Fans on the pass. What was that? <laughs> I don't know. I'm still trying to figure that out. Patrice Tardy <laughs> maybe try to figure it out too. Lift running at center. He tries a back pass. Here's Tardy back the other way for St. Louis. Gets his stick up in Ronning's face. He's going to pay for it. Penalty coming up to the Blues. Lehman fans on it. Tardy touches up and he'll go to the box. Tardy got his stick up a little high. He was trying to hook this much smaller Cliff Ronning. And it was almost sort of a hook high stick. But see that Koharski, the referee, was right there at the time. So as Ronning is trying to little spin around. Now Ronning goes 5 7. I think it's fair to say that. Sure enough, your stick's going to be a little high, but the point of the matter is you're responsible for where your stick is, and that would buy Tardif instead of stopping and going at his man, just took a little lazy swing with him. And Patrice Tardif has been terrific with Peoria so far this year. Just called up. He wasn't here last night against Dallas. He made the trip today and is playing in his first regular season game with the St. Louis Blues. University of Maine product. Pretty good collegiate career for Patrice and he went down and played real well in Peoria and that's the reason why he's here. He shows a great deal of speed. That lap at Tardif had that penalty was called. It took him a good 45 seconds before he realized he was going to the box. He played possum and Koharski had to point him that way. So Vancouver on the power play again. Here's Jeff Cortland. That was going wide but Joseph gloves it anyway and hangs on for the face off. So Vancouver's pressing it just a little bit. I mean, here they are on the power play with the man advantage. And instead of setting it up in the offensive zone, you know, Cortland might have had some time to, to go wide and fend off a little bit and then get a better shot. That was from quite a ways out. And Curtis Joseph's not going to have any problems with those shots. Rodding and Carboneau get set. Guy Carboneau tossed out in favor of Esatikina. And Mike Pekka takes the draw for Vancouver. Tikkanen wins it. Carbono and Hennigan meet up. Puck comes loose to center for Ronning. 48 game season. These games take on magnified importance. Vancouver feels fortunate they didn't drop last night's game to Dallas, scoring a goal late in the third period to tie it at one. Whitmore with Tikkanen behind him sticks to Jeff Brown. The Hedekin, the Vancouver Canucks finally get organized out of their zone. They'll dump in and try and do so in the St. Louis zone. Ronning over his stick. Jeff Brown does keep it in. A minute to go on the minor penalty to Patrice Tardy for St. Louis. 
And the Blues clear it. Al McGinnis does the job. Early on in this shortened season, sure enough, the, the skill players and the guys with the little heel-to-toe passes that would normally find the tape of their teammates, it's not happening. And everybody expected that in the early process. That's why a lot of power plays are struggling. Babbage and Burry fail to connect, and Adam Creighton just picks up the loose puck. He'll rag some time off in the Vancouver corner. And now it's Burry, 35 seconds to go on this power play. Trevor Linden. Back pass to Brown. Murray trails the play. Wasn't expecting it, I don't think, and couldn't get a shot off. And Brett Hull penalty killing up to Duchesne. Pass to Creighton. Creighton with the shot blocked off there by Babbage. Still 15 seconds left to go in the Vancouver power play. A mess out of Murray. Abel Murray looks for Babbage. Finds him. Babbage the shot surprised Joseph, but didn't put it on net. Yerke Lume with a shot from the slot. Goes wide. The penalties are penalty is over. The teams are back at five aside. And Tardy out of the box almost caught a flyer at center ice. Lume in his own zone. Very quiet crowd here in Vancouver. Trevor Linden tries to draw a hooking penalty. Can't do it. Here comes Craig Janney. Janney. The holder, the shot from point blank range, and Whitmore holds his ground. And here's Sean Antosky on a breakaway. Save Joseph, and he covers up in the crease area. He keeps it a 2 0 St. Louis lead. Say what, Curtis Joseph will not have a problem with Coach Mike Keenan if he continues to make saves like this. Terrific outlet pass by. Yarki Lume, right on the tape to Sean Antoski. And Antoski in all alone right there. He's got Craig Janney on him. Antoski, only one career goal, trying to go low to the stick side. And Joseph makes a real nice save and in getting down into a butterfly. Antoski head up all the way, thought he saw something on the stick side. And Joseph was able to not only make the save, but also smother up the rebound. So Antoski fails in his bid to get his second career NHL goal. Well, Sean Antosky is not paid to score goals anyway. You mentioned he has one career goal to go with 219 career penalty minutes. So he's out there for his physical presence, but he had as good a chance as he'll ever have against Joseph that time. So he skates pretty good for a guy that goes about 235 pounds. Mm. He's a load. Babbage into the corner with Karamna. Picked up by Yuri Slager of Vancouver. And another giveaway in the Vancouver zone. Who wants it? My goodness. Hucks bouncing, bodies bouncing. Slager tries to backhand it out. Tim Hunter can't get it out. Murray Barron knocks him off his skates. And a whistle, and Hunter getting his gloves up in somebody's face. That's unusual, isn't it? <laughs> see the glove, see the glove of big Tim Hunter? <laughs> he's, in, he's in the back of it, right, right, right to, to the back around the glass. He had the big right paw going up there on Peter Stashney's head. Now, Stashney wears that little Jofa helmet. And Hunter just sort of grabbed a hold of the little mug. Now he's got a few words to say. Well, there a little collision before that. Watch Slager and Karamnov. Now Karamnov, all his teammates bug him all the time because his helmet it fits his head so loose, and, and it falls off or rolls around his head a couple of times. Good hit by Slager. Inserted into the lineup for tonight's game because of an injury last night to Dana Merzen. I mean, Merzen continues to be hounded by this knee problem that left him out of the Stanley Cup Finals last year. He played the entire game last night against Dallas. Lo and behold, two minutes left in the game. His knee acts a little bit funny, and sure enough, this morning it's just swollen up. And and he's going to have to have some arth arthroscopic work. And there we look at Tim Hunter that's going to go off for roughing. And that is one of the most prevalent noses that we have in the National Hockey League, without question. You show that nose to any Dynamo sports fan, let alone hockey fan, he will know who that is. That's Tim Hunter. All right, so the Blues on the power play, leading already 2 0. Al McGinnis motors out of his own zone. McGinnis. Gets it up to Steve Duchesne. Duchesne to Adam Creighton with those long arms. Creighton the shot saved by Whitmore. And back comes Martin Gelina for Vancouver. Gelina carries all the way into the St. Louis zone. Gelina still with it. Gets it back to Jeff Brown who thinks about shooting. Does so. Tip in attempt goes wide by Gelina. Still in the St. Louis zone. Mike Pecker controls for Vancouver. Ragging off some valuable time here. Pecker cut off by Duchesne, but he knocks Duchesne on his fanny. The fans love that. Blues having trouble getting organized here. 
Still a little over a minute to go in the St. Louis power play. Tekin is onside, but Portnall is there on the puck. He can't clear it. Tekin in again. Tekin and cruises in. Backhand, forehand, save. Whitmore then a score. Whitmore with the initial save, and Craig Janney was there to pick up the loose stuff. 3 nothing. Great play. All as a result of Tekin in at the blue line, showing some patience, then going wide to the backhand, then to the forehand. Tekin in tried to score on his own right. Whitmore made a good save. This is all loose. This is all real loose at the blue line. But here's Tekin in. He's bringing it into the backhand, then to the forehand. The rebound right on the tape. Craig Janney just slid in there very quietly, right through the slot. And Janney bags home his first goal of the season. Good save by Whitmore on the initial shot. Nobody's looking. Nobody has any idea on Vancouver who the heck is coming in behind. And the guy well known as CJ, Craig Janney, knots his first goal of the season well, on the power play. Janney, more known for his assist totals over the last four or five seasons than his goal totals, gets his first. And you see he got a big hug there from who? Red Hall. You betcha. Keeping things alive on that bench, and hey, they're good pals. Craig Janney's a big part of this hockey club, and I think the bigger question may not be the relationship between Hall and Mike Keenan, but some of the other players. I mean, Craig Janney's not known as a very a tough style of player. He lays back, he sort of sits in the weeds and makes great offensive plays and dishes the puck. And an elbowing penalty called here on St. Louis. Chasse will be sent to the box by Koharski, who was all the way across ice but saw something he didn't like. And Vancouver will go on the power play. That's what this has been. This has been a, yeah. a power play style of game. I mean, there really has rarely been much flow to this game because of that. Every time we look around, we've got elbows going up and what have you. Chasse is going off. He's the guy, so Vancouver will have the power play. Two minutes for elbowing. Denise Chasse came over with Steve Duchesne from the Quebec Nordiques about a year ago last year. About a year ago, uh, January, I should say, at this time. And I played in just three games last year with St. Louis. Big, strong, physical guy, 6'2", 200 pounds. That's a brilliant statement I made a year ago last year. Think about that. Sorry, Tommy. I've been with you a while. <laughs> I got rusty during the lockout. Oh. Here's Dee Carbono. Carbono on a break. And a save by Whitmore. Starts up Pavel Burry at center. Canucks trailing by three. Need one on this power play. Burry fakes it. Lume, Brown, one timer off the stick of Carbono. The former captain of the Montreal Canadiens and Stanley Cup winner clears the zone. Look at the guys St. Louis have on the ice killing penalties. Guy Carbono, three time Selkie Award winner. Tekin in. I mean, that, that, those acquisitions will really help that part of their game without question. Give them back the character that they need on the defensive side of the puck. Puck back in the Vancouver zone. One minute, two seconds left on the penalty. To the St. Louis Blues. Here comes Lume into the blue zone. Jeff Brown. Back to Lume. Murray on the right wing. Quickly over to Lume. Lume cruises in. Shot save. Curtis Joseph, who looks very sharp tonight. Let's quickly go to Bill Pito. Okay, Tom, San Jose, Toronto. It's 2 1 in favor of the Sharks. Here comes Toronto. Mike Craig. To Mike Eastwood, back to Craig. We call this a give and go. You can use that in any sport you want. Game tied at two. Back to Tom now, Vancouver. The man they call Cujo has been quick tonight. Good mitt right there. That, that puck came through a little bit of traffic through the legs of a couple of guys. Curtis Joseph doing a nice job of getting the big mitt on there. And again, the key is there's no rebound in front. See, Vancouver was forcing that to the perimeter and then trying to squeeze a shot in on a tough angle. Denise Chasse has 42 seconds left in his penalty for St. Louis. But the Blues clear it off the faceoff all the way down behind the Vancouver net. Lehman is out there now with Ronning, Babbitt, Yuri Slager, and Jeff Cortnall. Carbono and Ticker back on the ice for the Blues. Slager off the stick of Cortnall. Murray Barron clears it down for St. Louis. Slager out behind his net again. The Browning dumps it in. Joseph lets it go for Lehman. Off his stick. Al McGinnis tries to clear. And center is Craig Jenny. And the teams are back at five aside as Tardif steps out, or Chasse steps out, I should say. And this is Denis Chasse at center. 
Chasse with Tardy cruising in down the slot. Janney on the left wing boards. Gets around rotting. Chasse back to Doug Litster for a drive off the side of the net. Canucks know all about Litster. He played here for several years and played against them in the Stanley Cup Finals last spring. Schlager dumps one in from long distance on Joseph. <laughs> he just tosses it aside. Pretty casual. Looks like a baseball outfielder there. <laughs> Wants to speed the game up. Huh? Doesn't want to take a whistle. Enough of this, he says. Let's get going. Diddick behind his own net. Ian Hedekin on the back line for Vancouver. Red Hedekin, the former blue. Got to pack at center. St. Louis controlling this game, leading it three to nothing. Diddick in the corner. Peter Stasny intercepts for St. Louis. His centering pass in turn intercepted by Jelenov. Diddick dumps for Adams. Jelenov Karamov go for it. Peter Stasny for the Blues. And St. Louis's Gilbert clears to center. Jelenov at center for Vancouver. Jeff Brown dumps in. And stick the side by Joseph. That was that old fake dump in and shoot it right on the net trick. He's a heck of a dump in, right? behind the St. Louis net. Steve Duchesne on it. Kept in with a stick by Greg Adams. Ruled not a high stick. Right back out, Gilbert at center. Yurt Gilume, long pass to Brown. Off the stick of Genoa, and the Canucks will go for a line change. Halfway through this hockey game, three zip St. Louis. Pass intended for Antoski, too far in front. Antoski, though, hustles and gets there first. So no icing there. Here's Slager with a shot. It's traffic in the flex line and in the crease area. Joseph covers up with the glove. 9.39 to go in the second. 3 0 St. Louis. Blues coach Mike Keenan has taken three different franchises to the Stanley Cup final, trying to do it this year in St. Louis. Our Pringles storyline, Tony Twist, his first ever NHL goal. Adam Creighton, who's off to a great start with his fifth point in less than two games and a penalty-filled game. Don Koharski's been busy. 14 penalties for 34 minutes. The Pringles storyline and the face-off with the St. Louis zone to the left of Joseph. Red Hall, two goals, two assists last night in San Jose. Puck whistles wide of the St. Louis goal. Trevor Linden recovers for Vancouver. Yerky Lume quickly in on Joseph, sticks it aside. Curtis Joseph has not had to been spectacular tonight, but he's been solid. Dinnick the shot, hits traffic in front. Joseph goes down, scramble for it, and the puck is laying under the knees of Doug Lidster for a faceoff. When you talk about Curtis Joseph and he hasn't had to be spectacular, the thing is about Cujo is he's had to be spectacular every single game for the St. Louis Blues. I mean, in his last three years, he's played 60 games or more, 3,400 minutes is his high. He's faced over 1,900 shots and an NHL record a couple of years back, 2,300 shots. I mean, my goodness, his worst goals against has been 3.10. I mean, he has been brilliant in goal for St. Louis. The workload will be just lessened this year in terms of shots on goal. He also holds 19 St. Louis Blues goaltending oh. records. Al McGinnis behind the net for St. Louis, and the Blues clear at the center. Lume touches up and icing on St. Louis, so they face off in the Blues zone. The Blues are going to hang around here in Vancouver for a couple of days, and practice rather than travel before continuing their road trip in Canada and there they will open up next Thursday at the new Keel Center against the Los Angeles Kings and the deuce will be there for that game on Thursday night well, I understand it's a marvelous building just beautiful and uh, I mean the folks there they got that thing ready in a hurry and I know they wanted to open up the season against the Blackhawks at the United Center and then the Blackhawks in return would open up the season at the Keel Center that wasn't they weren't able to work that out unfortunately but nonetheless they're going to be able to open up the first professional game played there was the Peoria Riverman the minor league team of the St. Louis Blues. IHL franchise Steve Duchesne clears it for the Blues Rick Zombo hasn't had much ice time in the second period. Shot is deflected high over the glass into the crowd with 8.49 to go in the second. The St. Louis Blues have done all the goal scoring tonight. 
Three to nothing over Kay Whitmore and the Canucks. Pretty happy about that. Tom Mees and Darren Pag. Glad to be with you from Vancouver. More hockey action. Three games a week on ESPN2. Huh. And this abbreviated regular season. Can't beat it. You can't beat it. And you know, there's there's a lot of sayings out there. There's so many teams in the NHL that in the original six, you knew all the names. Well, guess what? At least in the Western and the Eastern Conference, respectively, you're going to know the names of the teams your team's playing against. You're going to see them a ton. Zombo the shot on Whitmore off his stick into the, the crowd. You think that's good considering the shortened regular season to just have interconference play? Well, I tell you what, they're going to have... <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I was watching the fans. They were cheering about that puck coming back on. But what you're going to have, in my opinion, is some of the great rivalries again. You're going to see teams playing each other and knowing each other, and it's going to make for very intense hockey. I don't mind it whatsoever. In fact, I like it. I mean, in this situation, there's nothing more that they can do about yeah. that. The fighting's going to go up, I guarantee it, because the rivalries are going to be heated, and players are going to not like each other more so than in the past when they didn't play each other as much. All right, the Blues control it in the Vancouver zone. Shot score! Duchesne took the shot. I don't know if Janney got a piece of it or not. It appeared to be deflected. And it's 4 nothing, St. Louis. Faceoffs are the key, and the St. Louis Blues have dominated in that department so far in this game. They are beating Vancouver in every facet of the game. Point right back to Duchesne. Duchesne, a quick little snapshot, and it, not sure from that angle. Whitmore's got the hands out like he didn't see what happened. The shot from Duchesne, nice and low. I think that was redirected. You see the droppage of the puck. It was going midway up the uh, net, and then it dropped, and Janney was the guy that went on his knees afterwards and sort of had, had his hands clenched together. Looked like Janney might get credited for a second goal of the contest. They're still uh, reviewing the tape before they make the official announcement. We'll withhold our uh, judgment until then. Are well, they going to give it to Steve Duchesne? So they say that uh, Janney did not deflect it. Maybe a Vancouver Canuck did, but Duchesne has been given credit for that goal, and that's his first of the season. I'm sure Janney doesn't care one way or another, but good puck movement again. It all stems from the win on the faceoff and a little puck movement from D to D. Duchesne's got a quick little nifty snapshot. He's able to get it off in a hurry. I tell you, the Vancouver, though, you want to look the other way. The only time this crowd's got as excited is when they've played out the body. A two-on-one, Chassé can't get a shot away. Centers and another score, Craig Johnson. And the round is on, 5 nothing, St. Louis. Oh, boy. That's his very first National Hockey League goal. The veteran Guy Carboneau reached down right away, picked up the puck, and gave it to the young Johnson. Just recalled from the Peoria Riverman. Again, a giveaway in the defensive zone for the Vancouver Canucks. Hedekin trying to go D to D, was caught right at the blue line. Carboneau, little backhand pass right on the tape to Chassé. Now Chassé is going to hesitate a little bit. The puck's going to hit the side of the net, right on the tape. Johnson's got an empty netter and his first ever NHL goal. And a St. Paul, Minnesota native who played for the Golden Gophers in Minnesota in college. The thrill of a lifetime. So Chassé and Carboneau assisting on the goal by Johnson, and it's a 5-0 St. Louis lead. And the Blues are becoming more numerous and more vociferous here at the Pacific Coliseum. Gary Lehman trying to get a shot away, couldn't do it. Well, the fans in Canada have not reacted like the fans south of the border. Sellouts all over in the United States last night with the NHL open their season. But here in Canada, only 12,000 here at the Coliseum last night against Dallas. 13,000 in Winnipeg, 14,000 people in Edmonton. And then Tampa Bay's got 26,000 people at their game. Why do you think that is, Darren? Fans here are very critical. I, quite frankly, they're, they're, I think they're more impatient. Here's Jeff Cortnell cut off of the pass by Duchesne. On a couple of those towns, uh, hefty ticket price increases certainly didn't help the mood of the fans, including here in Vancouver. They were soured, though. Fans here, they were soured throughout it all. I don't think it's, you know, I think that if you, if you win, you're going to, the people are going to come back. back. But yeah. the NHL, they still have their, they, they still have a lot of work to do to patch up the relationship. Patrice Tardif gives it away in his own zone, running in front of Cortnell. And now Tardif makes up for it by stealing the puck back. Tardif to Craig Chaney. Chaney to Asa Tinkadon. Janney back to Tinkadon. Can't get to it. Flops up over the glass into the crowd. With six minutes, 43 seconds left to go in the second period. 
St. Louis Blues have now scored 10 goals in the new season in less than five periods. So Craig Johnson, his first career NHL goal coming midway through the second period and given St. Louis, man, what a very comfortable 5 nothing lead on the road. What a way to start for Mike Keenan and the St. Louis Blues. Well, Johnson was not only a golden gopher, he played for the U.S. Olympic team in 94, had four assists for the U.S. effort in the Olympics. Play back on at center. Martin Jelena of Vancouver. Now it's Gerald Dunick. Bouncer comes in on Joseph. Now McGinnis. Vitaly Karanda tries to get around Lume, can't do it. Karanda back to Murray Barron, lets her rip. It's traffic to flex wide. Now McGinnis off the leg of Courtney. That's got to hurt. Guess that would. Anytime Al McGinnis loads her up and lets her fly, Cornell went right off the ice. Back in the St. Louis zone. Johnson tries to get to it, beaten to it by Greg Adams. Deflects off bodies in front, and Joseph had to be alert to stick it aside. Well, Joseph has had a lot more work tonight than he had last night in San Jose. He's faced 18 shots already, had 19 all last night in San Jose. Havel Burre. Murray breaks in, goes to the backhand, but a good job by Zombo tying up his stick just enough. Loose glove on the ice as Linden goes back to retrieve it. Adams is double teamed at center. Yuri Slager up to Murray. He's onside. Shot save. Always interesting when Curtis Joseph or any goaltender sees Murray coming in on him. Brayton. At Hull. Hull gets his stick up a little bit there with Yuri Slager. Action in front of Whitmore again. Abel Burry now circles back behind his net. Burry to center, taken down, and a penalty coming up to Adam Creighton, and he knows it. 4.48 to go in the second. Everybody here at the Coliseum felt that Adam Creighton was going off for hook, and here's the hook to the right arm, but in fact, Don Korski hesitated for a second. The call is on Pavel Burry for unsportsmanlike <laughs> conduct, for a dive, and that's what happened. Just before that, Pavel Burry had a tremendous chance, his best one, let her fly, trying to go through the leg. He had that through the legs. The stick of Joseph was off the ice, but Joseph had both of his pads on the ice right in the knee area, and so he was nullified by that guy, Pavel Burry. I think he's a little stunned that he was called for that penalty. You know, the, the funny part about that is Adam Creighton went right to the box. He thought for sure the penalty was on him. But no. You just don't see that call very often. No. It just never happens. But Bure last night got away with one. Maybe Koharski says, well, you're not going to continue that with me. Craig Janney setting up shop now in the Vancouver zone as the Blues with a five-goal lead go on the power play. And Janney lets it fly. Save Whitmore. The rebound is not clear, though. McGinnis back to Janney. Jenny has one of the five St. Louis goals tonight. Assistant on another. McGinnis with a rifle shot. But Tim Hunter gets in the way of that. Hunter just before that gave a shot to the head to Al McGinnis right at the blue line. Hunter do doing what he does best, being pesky out there. A very polite way to describe that, Darren. Mm, thought so. Patrice Tardy breaks into the Vancouver zone. Into the corner. Babbage tries to clear. Does so for the Canucks. All St. Louis tonight. The Blues come out to center with it. Still 48 seconds left on the penalty to Pavel Bure. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Four man strong for possession. Doug Litzter comes away for St. Louis. And he'll take the shot. It's bodies in front to the right of Whitmore. Chasse tries to center. Tardif is tied up there. Bill Holder keeps it in the Vancouver zone. Patrice Tardif with it. 15 seconds to go in the cut penalty. Tardif. And finally cleared off the glass and out by Martin Gelinov. 
Here comes Burray out of the box. The team's back at five aside. Stasny at center has it taken away by Adams. The shot. Hard save by Joseph. Got that catching arm up just in time. Murray in the corner. Back to Adams. It's traffic. Back to Pavel Murray and offside the call on Vancouver. Pretty hard shot by Greg Adams, number eight for Vancouver. He was a dominant force in the playoff run for the Vancouver Canucks last year. Greg got good wood on this shot, crossing the blue line, and just let her rip. 31-year-old still got something left, that's for sure. Just signed a new contract with the Vancouver Canucks. This one going high to the glove side. Look, Cujo, where the heck did that thing go? Right off the shoulder area. Curtis Joseph couldn't get his glove on it, but the rebound went over to his left anyway. Back at center, Brent Hedekin dumps into the St. Louis zone. Off the stick of Brown and a two-on-one the other way. But Hedekin beats Adam Creighton to the puck. Creighton could have had that. He had Brett Hull trailing the play. Brown in his own zone. Vancouver's just playing, they're just playing sloppy. Nothing's going, nothing's going right. No passes no. tape to tape. Not a good effort for the Canucks so far tonight. Pablo Burry in the slot. And it's blocked off there by McGinnis. Rebound comes out to Hedekin. His shot is wide. Gilbert with it for St. Louis. Up to Key Carbono. Carbono at center. Over to Craig Johnson. The youngster from Minnesota with his first NHL goal tonight. Burray loses control as he tried to pass it off the boards to himself. Now he gets it back. Pablo Burray is taken down. And this time there will be a penalty to the St. Louis Blues. And a derisive cheer from the fans here for Don Koharski. Pavel Burry using his speed to his advantage, taking advantage of that. He can go from A to B while he's stopped in no time flat. I guess you're going down the left side now. Now he gets hooked up. This is a legitimate hook. As he's getting up now, now he's looking at the referee Koharski. Me? <laughs> no, no, Pavel, not you this time. All right, more football coming your way tomorrow on ESPN. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time from the Hawaiian Islands. It's the Hula Bowl. Feature players, East uh, Squad, Cor Colorado's Cordell Stewart, Boston College's Pete Mitchell. For the West, it's Michigan quarterback Todd Collins, Notre Dame tailback Lee Beckton, Lee Corso, and Mike Gottfried, celebrity coaches. I got to watch that. That's 8 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow night on ESPN. Corso calling plays, a frightening thought. Well, the penalty call on Johnson to St. Louis, so Vancouver back on the power play. Ronning, Yerke Rume surveys the situation. No time to waste here, and the Blues clear it all the way down behind the Vancouver net. Yerke Lume molders to center. Gets around taking it. To Cliff Ronning. Momesso had limited ice time tonight. Ronick takes the shot. It's Travick in front. And back with it is Asa Tikkanen. St. Louis has done a marvelous job tonight of blocking shots. That one by Murray Barron. Al McGinnis has blocked several shots in this contest. Time and time again, there's been no shots getting through from the point position. 30 seconds to go in the period. Momesso takes Duchesne court. Duchesne takes it away. Lume, though, corrals it. Off the boards to Ronick. Lumet keeps it in, but right on the stick of Brett Hall, the Blues captain. Hull takes it in himself, almost gets around Slager. Gary Slager Hull is almost undressed in his own zone. Jeff Cardinal cruises in. Taken away there by Brett Hull. And that'll do it for the second period. And the crowd registering their disapproval. In St. Louis, they gotta be cheering. But here in Vancouver, they're booing. Curtis Joseph and the St. Louis Blues have it all their way tonight so far. Mike Keenan and company go to the locker room with a five-goal lead. Bill Pito in the sports match coming up. Here at the Vancouver Coliseum, look at all these deuces. Deuces wild on ESPN2. The deuce lose in British Columbia on this balmy January evening. Curtis Joseph has been on the loose, too. He's been good when he's had to be, and he's had the support tonight. 
In last night's game, even though he only faced 19 shots against the San Jose Sharks, he made several brilliant uh, saves. And in fact, 16 of the 19 were very good chances against Curtis Joseph. Let's take a look at the cumulative statistics through two yeah. periods. Well, I, the one that I like is the face-offs one right there. I, I, St. Louis has dominated in that facet of the game. Obviously, they're scoring more goals, scoring chances outnumbered seven to four. Power play, one for five for St. Louis. You know, Vancouver has had several chances to get back into it with some power plays, but don't forget, a couple of them were only short ones, seven or eight seconds, 15 or 20 seconds. So Kay Whitmore, in his first start of the 1995 season, oh, you see his nose right there? Yeah. He yeah. told us if after a couple of periods things aren't going well and I'm out of win, I'm going to try that breathe right thing. So he's got the Band-Aid over his nose. Hopefully that'll help out Kay Whitmore, but boy, he just hasn't had a whole lot of help either in this game. Guys have been swimming all around him, and there hasn't been much defensive support or guys on Vancouver taking out the body. They have not been nearly as physical as what they should be. Mike Keenan, on the other hand, has to be very pleased with the effort of his hockey club for the second consecutive night. They have one more game on the roll before opening up at the beautiful new Keel Center in St. Louis on the deuce. Next Thursday night against Wayne Gretzky and the LA Kings, there will be excitement of plenty in St. Louis, Missouri that night. Here comes Brett Hall as the third period is underway. The Blues are shorthanded for the first 20 seconds or so of this period. Now Vancouver retain, oh. retains control and a shot by Adams hits Joseph in the mask. Drop right down in front of him. Thank goodness for that headgear. <laughs> I guess so. Thank My goodness. goodness. Nose would be in the back of his head. I saw some highlights of Johnny Bauer the other night. I'm going, how in the world do those guys do it without the mask? Trevor Linden back to Hedekin. Hedekin dumps in front, but now the teams are back at five aside. And a whistle stops play 33 seconds here into the third period with the Blues in full control at five nothing. Take a look at the veteran defenseman Rick Zombo. It's one of the true muckers and grinders of the game, Rick Zombo. Also played against Mike Keenan when he was with the St. Louis Blues and Keenan was in Chicago So Mike knows full well what Rick Zombo is all about. Meanwhile, just before that, here's the shot by Greg Adams High and hard right in the melon. That hit him right square in the melon, didn't it? Sure did. That and new mask of Cujo has got a little bit of a workout right there Right around the forehead Curtis Joseph was all excited uh, during the lockout. He caught a couple of the games we did at University of Wisconsin his uh, alma mater of one year and uh, he says, hey, I saw you guys up at Wisconsin a couple times. And he was all excited about his Badgers. Here's how a play can develop. One quick pass, a fresh sheet of ice. Brett Hedekin's had some troubles, but this is a perfect pass right on the tape to Greg Adams. Then Adams just lets her fly. Oh, man. It's a good angle right there, and you really appreciate the molded mask as compared to the old helmet because the molded mask will allow the puck to deflect to the corner so you don't take the full brunt of it right on your face. All you get is a little ringing in the ear, maybe a mild headache. Get your bell rung a few times. You, you still hear things at night, don't you? Every now and then, Darren? And no, you just you, you kick wildly, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Babbage at center for Vancouver. Zombo intercepts his pass. Cardinal and Babbage try and come away with it. They lose possession to Carbono. Shot goes high over the glove side of Kay Whitmore. Jelenaud center for Vancouver. Off the boards to Babbage. And half the team goes into the net. Martin Jelena hanging on for dear life. Well, coming up. There will be a face-off in the uh, Vancouver zone, or rather the St. Louis zone, as Marta Jelena had to hang on for dear life to the crossbar. Jelena, I was kidding him. I said, you look a lot different without your playoff beard, young man. <laughs> Yeah, the, the guys in the playoffs that, that grow the beards, that don't have the full capabilities to grow the beards, man, gas it. But that's part of the, the <laughs> neat thing about being in the playoffs. And I, Martin Jelena won a Stanley Cup with the Edmonton Oilers as part of the kid line there that year with Edmonton. Billy Ranford in goal, and last year had such a close chance at it as well. Pretty good hockey player, pretty good acquisition also by the Vancouver Canucks. He was a waiver pickup last year. He was on the line with Joe Murphy and Adam Graves. That's right, yeah. yeah. They beat the Boston Bruins. Our times have changed in Edmonton. All right, play back on behind the St. Louis net. Up with it for the Blues. Bill Holder cleared it momentarily. Puck back at center. Didick dumps into the St. Louis zone. Craig Johnson has it deflected aside by Lehman. 
on a loose play out here in the third period. There, let me ask you, early on, short retraining camp, if you will, is the third period going to be the, the sloppiest for the first week or two? Well, we've seen the second period pretty sloppy as well in both the games we've seen here in Vancouver. The third one, usually more desperation. Lume shot hits traffic in front. Because they're going to be tired more, is that? Yeah, that's yeah. what I was asking. Chasse with a quick shot. Whitmore held his ground. Conditioning, I think, will be a factor no matter how well you, you skated over the past week or so. But I would guess the first five or six games. It's the hands, it's the, it's the timing, it's the systems. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything just naturally is out of whack. Adam Creighton in the Vancouver zone. Now comes loose to center. Back to McGinnis. But St. Louis hasn't looked so bad. That's, no. I mean, one side. Vancouver just has not played well. They have not they have not accomplished the things that they were supposed to when this game started. I mean, there, there's no getting around it. The Canucks have uh, looked pretty bad tonight in front of their home crowd. And for the second consecutive night, much less than a sellout here at the Pacific Coliseum. Murray Barron in the corner. Avoids the check of Tim Hunter. Always a good thing to do. Tony Twist. Stastny at center. Twist. Play is uh, ruled onside, even though Karamov appeared to be in early. Twist goes down. Vitaly Karamov still has it in the corner. And Toski takes care of him. And Toski appeared to shoot it on his own goaltender. Hit the side of the net. He's lost control. Peter Stosny leaves it for Zombo. He'll take the shot. Whitmore stood there, and here comes Pavel Burry. He's got some jump in his stride here in the third period. Got Joseph off his skates, but the shot was high. Pass to Burry, intercepted by Duchesne. Slager dumps behind. Joseph will play it for Zombo. Holder off the board. Intercepted by Babich of Vancouver. Off the stick of Slager. No icing called for here. Slager gets away from Janney, and Yuri Slager carries to center. Cardiff interrupted that pass to Adams. Danny clears it back to center. How many stoppages at all here in the third period? Tikkanen and Slager battle for it. Slager just tripped Tikkanen. Nothing to all. Winder up here, Pavel. And the lethargy that uh, seems to have overcome this Canuck team tonight is really surprising. Murray seems to be the only one with consistent jump in his stride. Are taking advantage of it. Jelena, get Corko in on Joseph. Save. Rebound ends up under Curtis Joseph. The Blues all over the Vancouver Canucks. Five zip with 15 minutes to go or 14 24 to go. Welcome back to the Coliseum where the Vancouver Canucks need some jump. They got it a moment ago from Pavel Bure taking that puck to the backhand and getting good mustard on it, trying to go high over the stick side of Curtis Joseph and he can get good wood on that little backhander as well. I think Steve Duchesne when he started backing up was, was wondering what the heck Pavel was going to do. But Bure decided to go wide to the outside. Now Curtis Joseph is getting a little bit of work Tommy and just moments ago Cornell had a pretty good scoring chance and that one looked like it was going wide but see Joseph makes no mistake whatsoever. A lot of people think that's hot dogging or whatever you know but quite often if you can get a hold of that puck especially when you're on the road I think it's imperative to get a hold of the puck and get a whistle. Why have the Vancouver Canucks the home team ignite any kind of excitement at all in this building. Just get a whistle. You don't have to be fancy. Yeah when you're when you're up five goals you can afford to do that. And sometimes you don't know if it's wide or not. You, ha you know you don't know exactly where every puck is. You might be a little bit out of position. Duchesne keeps it deep in the Vancouver's home blues. Yerky Lume to Gerald Dinnick. Dinnick gets center. Mike Pekka gets it over to Martin Jelena. Jelena looks to center back to Pekka. Misses the mark. Timing not there. Now it's Adam Creighton. 
The Brett Hull at center. You know Hull who got two and two last night in San Jose would like to get on the board with a goal tonight. There are a handful of players I think that could reach the 50 goal mark in a 48 game season. Brett Hull is definitely one of them. Pavel Bure could be the other one. Yep. See Timo Solani scored a goal tonight. Mm -hmm. So did Paul Korea, his first goal for the 90 Ducks in a win. And Winnipeg. Jeff Brown behind the Vancouver net. So Yari Yar Curry was up to his old self last night. Two goals for the Kings. Running. Gary Lehman can control the pass. Stasny around the boards and out the center. Under 13 minutes to play here in the third period. 5 nothing, St. Louis. And Lidlifter on the deuce for this abbreviated NHL season. Brown is onside. Momesso the shot. Joseph gets a piece of that. He looks so calm in that tonight. And he has been sharp. I, you know, this is this is what Curtis Joseph, really, this is the way he plays. Sometimes he looks like he's sort of maybe maybe a little bit more, what would you say, a little bit more of the, uh, the gymnastics type in the net. I mean, he does a lot of moving in that net, but you can tell that he's seen the puck awfully well. He's, he's staying square. He's very deep in his net like he always is. But he's seen the puck. Every one of these shots, he, he, he's just seen them, and he's moving the right way. Well, Joseph told me before the game tonight that already he can tell the team is, is a lot stronger in the face-off area, and a lot stronger moving people out in front of him to let him see the puck. And I guess so. They lead it 5 to nothing. If you like grand openings, ESPN2, the place to be next week. Wednesday night, we'll be at the new United Center in Chicago. First ever regular season game, Hawks and Oilers, 8.30 Eastern. Then Thursday night, we'll be at the brand new Kiel Center in St. Louis as the Blues, Keenan and Hull, entertain Gretzky and the Kings. That's Thursday. Note that start time, Thursday, 9 Eastern and 8 o'clock Central Time. Here's Craig Johnson of St. Louis. His play is on back here in Vancouver. 5 nothing St. Louis. Penalty call on the Canucks. Is that Antosky? Yes. He's going to be called, I believe, for a hold or an interference penalty. Yeah, it's a holding call, Tommy. He was trying to grab Denise Chasse, who was busting down the right side, trying to get a pass from Johnson. And Chasse did what he has to do. He has to keep moving his feet and going towards the net, going towards the post. And Antosky did a great job of coming back and grabbing his man. Grabbed him a little bit too hard and knocked Chasse down. So St. Louis will go on the power play. The neat thing, you know, what St. Louis's power play to me intrigues the heck out of me because I touched on it a little bit before, but you got Brett Hull out there, okay? That, that's, a, that's a weapon in itself. When yeah. Brett Hull is on the ice, you're always focused on where the heck Brett Hull is. So the coaching staff, Bob Barry on the right, Mike Keenan right there at the center of your screen. You get him the puck? Well, if you don't get him the puck, Duchesne can fire it. And if you don't get Duchesne the puck, you got Al McGinnis that can fire the heck out of a puck. My goodness. And he hasn't even teed him up yet in this game. And either is Hull. And they're winning this game 5 nothing. Scary thing, isn't it? St. Louis has Duchesne. Duchesne's cross-eyes pass, though, for McGinnis is back uh, over the blue line. Also out there on the power play, Janney, Creighton, and Hull. That is a potent group, let me tell you. That one went over the glass, Tom. Creighton tried a, a little bit of a dump in, and it went right in over the glass to the left of Whitmore. Adam, Adam Creighton, I tell you, he's off to a great start. Mike Keenan was gleaming when I saw him earlier talking about Adam Creighton. Creighton played with Mike Keenan in, in Chicago. You notice that all these players have had an association with Mike. They know what to expect with Mike. He knows what to expect from that player. And, and he's done that everywhere he's been. I mean, that's been part of Mike Keenan and how he's had success. He goes with who he knows, and it's been pretty successful. Keenan has taken three different teams to the Stanley Cup Finals. Flyers, Hawks, and the New York Rangers. Finally won one with the Rangers last spring, of course. And if he does it again in St. Louis this year, my goodness, a lot of hockey to be played. Duchesne, Hunter in the corner. Now McGinnis behind the net. Adam Creighton off the board. Another penalty going to be called here. Slashing call by Koharski. And it's going to be against Vancouver, I believe. Is he sending Hunter back to the box? One of the things we, we, we've sort of failed to discuss, and that is the referees. You know, many are out there saying, why the heck is he calling so many penalties? Uh, let's not forget, these referees haven't been doing anything either. That's Dr. Right. Harsk hasn't made a call in, in eight months. <laughs> I mean, are you insinuating that he wanted to loosen up the whistle just to th get things going tonight? No, but I'm sure the timing's not on for him, and that you know, that at time he's not going to be good for him. I mean, I'm sure they're not in the best of shape either. But you get in a routine early on, and, and uh, I mean, I mean, did Co Coho's called a heck of a lot of penalties in this game. 
a heck of a lot of penalties. So it's a five on three advantage now for the Blues for the next minute or so at least as Duchesne motors into the Vancouver zone. Chanty, chance for some of the St. Louis players to pad their stats here. McGinnis thought about the one timer. Chanty. McGinnis oh, fires it right into the legs of Jeff Brown. Duchesne the shot hit the outside of the post. Another penalty coming up. This one to Vancouver as well. Another penalty coming up to Vancouver. McGinnis takes one wide. It's time to practice out there for the Blues. Here's a shot by Hull goes wide. And Whitmore is sticking Creighton in the legs in the crease area. And Creighton get, hit, gets pitched for it by Hennepin. He's getting hammered in front of that net. He really is. Vancouver finally touches up, and a trip is being called on Brett Hennepin. And he better watch it, or he'll get more. A little frustration for Brett Hennepin. You know, a lot of times when you're killing a penalty, the referee will look the other way in front of the net. Guys in the past have been able to certainly have more liberties in front of that net, whether it be cross-checking or having your stick behind the knee of one of the players. We talked about penalties already. Vancouver, 10 penalties in this game for 23 minutes. St. Louis, 9 penalties in this game for 21 minutes. Yeah, that's a heck of a lot. That's 19. Right in front of the net. Nothing doing there. There it is right there. That's the jab behind the knee. That's a, that's a dangerous play. Dangerous, it knocks yeah. the player off balance. A lot of times the goaltenders would do that. You're not going to have a welt behind the knee. You're going to knock him off balance. It's not really a spear to the back of the knee. It's not a slash. You're taking the tip of your blade and you're pushing the, the, the back side of your knee. So a player's naturally going to fall. All right. So the St. Louis Blues, still their two-man advantage. Brent Hall trying to feed Chani. 12 seconds, Antosky will be out, but it will remain a two-man advantage for the St. Louis Blues, even when Antosky comes back on the ice. Ten minutes to go in this hockey game as McGinnis cruises at center. Janney. Back to Duchesne. McGinnis takes the shot. And it ends up in the net. Well, went behind the net. Is that Craig Janney that poked it in? It was Adam Creighton. Adam Creighton. That big long reach of Adam Creighton, six foot five. Man, his stick is three miles long. And he was able, from behind the net, there was more options, but Creighton thought that he might have had the left leg of Kay Whitmore. I think he banked it in right off the left leg of an unsuspecting Kay Whitmore. And Creighton has got his second goal of the game. Third goal of the season, shot from McGinnis to the point. Again, we talked about the threat of that. That went off the leg of Creighton. Now watch Creighton. Mm. Just brought it in and then off the skate before Whitmore could get to his left. Whitmore was a little lackadaisical, a little nonchalant getting back. And Adam Creighton's got a second goal of the game. And third goal of the young season. So Adam Creighton with that long reach makes it a 6 0 game. And the Blues remain on a 5 on 4 power play. As Hennigan remains in the box. And much of the crowd of only 12,558 already filing out of the Pacific Coliseum. And this were a Broadway show would close in one night here in Vancouver. <laughs> Lidster gets the pass over to Tinkin and it's just it's just fire the puck at Kay Whitmore now. You know, combination of things here. Certainly Vancouver has played brutal, no question about that. But again. St. Louis has played a terrific hockey game. You know, early in the season, I'm very impressed with how they've moved. Meanwhile, Brett Hall, you, you know, this guy can do a lot. Obviously, he's, he's one of the premier goal scorers in the National Hockey League. A couple of things he just did on that last shift to get into a little bit, but uh, it's fun to watch these great players and what they do and how they slow down the play a little bit too, Tommy. Uh, whereas players that just come in, they sort of force things a little bit. Six nothing, still on the power play. Holder. Shot goes high over the net. Tikkun in the corner. What a difference from the last time you and I saw the Blues in the playoffs last year. Four and out against the Dallas Stars, and go, go, go. the situation looked grim. And there go 13 players and eight new faces. That's what happens. Whitmore again, and another goal. Kay Whitmore carried loss, and Denise Chasse says thank you very much. That puck went in, I think, with Whitmore having his back to the shooter. Here comes the debris. Some fans were in front of me as that puck crossed the line, and I didn't see it clearly, but I believe that the goalie had his back turned. Well, Kay Whitmore had troubles, and he's had trouble throughout the game handling the biscuit in front. This one was a shot that just got kind of rolled into him. His stick was lifted, it looked like, by either his own player or 
one of the St. Louis Blues. So as he was trying to clear the puck, his stick was lifted, and the puck ends up right on the tape of Chassé. And Chassé scored his second career NHL goal. And as you said, the debris comes in from the fans. Here's the problem with starting off at home. First of all, the fans are impatient. The fans are demanding more. Ticket prices have increased tenfold in the National Hockey League and here in Vancouver, and you can get into that. So therefore, the fans, they're not wanting any kind of excuses. They want the thing done. We'll be back in a moment. Seven up. Welcome back to Pacific Coliseum where Brett Hall, yes, most certainly he's got a grin on his face along with his new teammate, Essa Tikkanen. Uh, they'll be a happy couple. On the power play earlier, <laughs> I was talking about Brett Hall. And here's what I was talking about, slowing himself down. He goes, he's to the right of Whitmore. Now the puck's coming to him. He looks like he's slowing himself down, dragging a leg, trying to keep up with the play right there, and then making sure that he gets the puck, his stick on the puck as well that was rolling a little bit. And it ends up that Brett Hall in this game, amazingly enough, in this 7-0 romp over the Vancouver Canucks, Brett Hall not only has no goals and no points in this hockey game, not even a shot on goal. And they're winning this by a score of 7 to nothing, Tommy. Mm, that's amazing. Well, nothing but the net on the deuce tomorrow. College hoop triple header. Eight-track Maryland and North Carolina State. Joe Smith and company. You'll see that one live at 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 a.m. Pacific. Followed by another ACC tilt. Georgia Tech's rambling wreck rambles into Charlottesville to meet Virginia. That'll be at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific time. And then an evening affair for the Southwest Conference. TCU taking on Rice. TCU third in the country in offense and a 10-4 overall record for Texas Christian and Billy Tubbs. You'll see them live at 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific. Nothing but net on the news tomorrow afternoon and evening. And Ron Smith knows now what a head coach feels like behind the bench. <laughs> Well, this is, a seven of the this is going to be extremely frustrating for Ron Smith, for Rick Lee, for Pat Quinn, for George McPhee. There are a lot of high expectations. They had to sign a load of hockey players in the offseason. Their payroll is going up. But uh, Ron Smith, who was an associate to Roger Nielsen in 1982 when the Vancouver Canucks also went to the Stanley Cup Finals and lost to the eventual winner, the New York Islanders. So he's had some experience, 21 years in coaching. Well, not only are the Canucks payroll going up, the St. Louis Blues are adding to their payroll, too. They increased, uh, well, we see, $9.1 million, their team payroll from a year ago. You want talent, you got to pay for it in this day and age. And the St. Louis Blues didn't hire Mike Keenan just to do well. They want to win a Stanley Cup. The Blues went to the Stanley Cup Finals. Their first three years of existence have not been back since. Here's Craig Johnson with a turnover to Vancouver zone. Real sloppy play. Johnson had more time than that. Mm. Mike Pekka. I know what's on Curtis Joseph's mind. The last eight minutes, 12 seconds. Don't say it, here. Tommy. But we know what's on his yeah. mind. Cardinal over to Jeff Brown. Shot save. Rebound save. Down on his rear end is Joseph, but his teammates come to the rescue. Uh, Keith Carbono gets the gloves off. You don't see that very often. Carbono defending his territory. That was Jeff Portnell. That was the Vancouver Canuck player looking for a rebound with Curtis Joseph. And you're right. The three-time Selkie Trophy winner, Guy Carbono, came across with a high-flying right to get Courtnell the heck out of the way. I thought somewhere, maybe in the later parts of this first period, that uh, the first period, I'm sorry, that, that maybe Vancouver would rough it up a little bit more. They, they didn't have that kind of jump, but Guy Carbono and the St. Louis Blues did a tremendous job of fending them off. There's that top defensive trophy. That's the Selkie Award for Guy Carbono. Great leader for the Montreal Canadiens for many years. And you know who drafted him? Ron Caron. When That's he worked right. for the Canadiens, drafted him. Finally, Ron's got him back. Well, Ron, Ron will always tell you when he sees a good player, he says, hey, you know, I drafted that guy. <laughs> well, he did drop that guy. <laughs> Face off in the St. Louis zone. And Brett Hall at center. What do we say, that guy? That guy, I draft that guy. It's an average player, though. He had nothing to do with it. It's the loudest response the Canucks fans have given. Now, they always pick on the goalie. It's a team game out there, isn't it, Tom? You guys are the last line of defense. You always like to tell us that, right? No, we, 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 want, we want all the credit when we win, and we want to share it when we lose. That's only fair. <laughs> Under eight minutes to go on this one. Seven nothing. St. Louis Blues. 
The fans back in St. Louis have the love that they're seeing early on this season from their team. The Keel, uh, the Keel Center will be uh, cranked up when Gretzky and Curry and the Kings come in Thursday on the deuce at 9 Eastern time. Jeff Brown dumps off the stick of uh, Curtis Joseph. Portnall gets it back to Yuri Slager. Slager the shot. Good kick save. Rebound score. Well, Curtis Joseph couldn't stop everything. Jeff Portnall put in the rebound. It's 7 to 1. Well, Courtney couldn't go, he couldn't have gone off the ice quicker. I mean, after he scores this goal, shot comes in from the point. Good save there by Joseph. The rebound right on the tape to Courtney. Courtney just a simple little backhand puts it up over top the sprawling goaltender Slager with the initial shot from the point. And, and Courtney right after he puts the hands up, then he puts him down real quick and says, "Oh man, don't get too excited. Seven-one here. A little late in the contest. First goal of the year for Courtney." And only the second goal of the season for the Vancouver Canucks as a team. Cardinal had an assist in last night's 1-1 time with the Dallas Stars here. Adams in the corner. Shot from Barrett for the left point. Stick save side by Whitmore. Mike Pecker, the extra from Syracuse. The crunch got an assist on that goal. Second point of the season, an offside of the Canucks. 6.21 to go here in the game, 7 1 St. Louis. Greg Adams took a tumble. Greg Adams really has been double shifted a lot through this hockey game. He's seen an awful lot of ice time. Adam. Assistant captain had a terrific playoff run last year, and I'm sure they're all anxious to get off to a good start here. And as I said before, for Greg Adams and for everybody here in Vancouver, there's a certain amount of pride that goes into it. But, you know, you start off at home ice and you lose. There's the, you know, everybody's talking about the teams. Oh, boy, they got to start off on the road. They're in a tough position. Well, not really, because if you, you, you can get the jump on a team when they're on home, especially right now where the skills aren't as sharp. And obviously, Vancouver's having some troubles right here on home ice. He also leaves it for Rick Zombo. The official on that goal on the power play, Cortnell from Slager and Pekka. Well, Mike Peck has been one of the few players here on Vancouver. And last night's game against Dallas scored his first National Hockey League goal. Spent some time in the American League. I know, Tommy, you did some games with Mike Peck. And there he is right in the middle of your screen. I know there's a lot of guys that are in the middle of your screen, but Mike Peck, a youngster, played for the Syracuse Crunch of the American Hockey League. Scored 55 goals with the Ottawa 67s of the Ontario Hockey League. He's a real heck of a player. He's their bright young up-and-comer. Another guy with a crunch. The uh, Canucks top farm team is Nathan Lafayette. He's rehabbing a uh, kneecap injury, and he should be back up here within a week to 10 days, they said. Now, in our opening, we talked about that post that he hit to tie up the game against the New York Rangers in Game 7. Nathan Lafayette was a pleasant surprise. I mean, let's not forget, these two teams have a strong association, the St. Louis Blues and the Vancouver Canucks. After all, it was the trades that the Blues have made to Vancouver that has spurned the Vancouver Canucks on to greater heights. Mm -hmm. Here's Lingman into the St. Louis zone. Lehman, Cliff running, a close-in shot. Saved by Joseph, the rebound goes to the corner. Not only that, they're in the first game that the uh, Vancouver Canucks ever played in the National Hockey League 25 years ago. They open up against the St. Louis Blues. Richie Lume, the center ice, Tim Hunter. Al McKinnis back the other way, just playing out the string now. Five minutes, 10 seconds left. And here comes big Sean Antosky. McIntyre is with him. Antosky goes the backhand, and Joseph the save. Antosky could have passed it, but did not. And Tim Hunter is getting into the fray in the corner. Whistle stops playing with five minutes even left to go. Tommy's and Darren Pang back in Vancouver. That's Sean Antosky. He's had two chances to score tonight. Clear-cut breakaways on both chances. Here is Antosky. He's busted. He's got a little hook, though, on his side. He's also got a teammate, McIntyre, with him. I don't think he saw McIntyre on his right side, and he tried to, you know, that that little play is, is really popular. You go on on the goalie, and you take it from your forehand to your backhand, and then try to slip it between his legs, hoping the goaltender's got to spread out that five hole, and that's what Antosky was trying on that one. But Curtis Joseph is very good and very efficient at coming across and shutting down the pads. Carboneau and McIntyre will take the face off for the St. Louis zone. Blues come away with it. Craig Johnson. 
Zombo at center. Tied up there. Kane Whitmore, one of the fans are really getting on him. You're right. Leaves the punt for a defenseman and gets a derisive cheer. Here's Guy Carboneau. Tim Hunter at center. Dumps in, but nobody home for Vancouver. Zombo for the Blues. Johnson clears it. Loose at center. Brett Pinnikin is on it. Double teamed off the puck, and again, no penetration by Vancouver. They're on a line chain. Craig Janney dumps into the corner. And Satikinen hits the leg of Jelena. Bill Holder obtained from the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. Yuri Slager for Vancouver up to Courtnall. Goal score tonight for the Canucks. Jelena. The save by Joseph. Doug Lickster made a good, uh, good play there on Jelena. And, and Joseph was there for the next shot. Well, the Hula Bowl coming up tomorrow night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time on ESPN. The East versus the West. Some of the best football players in the country, like Cordell Stewart of Colorado, Pete Mitchell, the tight end of BC, Todd Collins from Michigan, Lee Beckton, the tailback of Notre Dame, and the coaches, Lee Corso and Mike Godfrey. Worth the price of admission. Corso on the sidelines again. Interesting. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, Hula Bowl on ESPN tomorrow night. Or in the Eastern time zone tonight. Central for that matter has been like St. Louis time, but I bet a lot of Blues fans are standing up for this one. So what do you think of the red part of the jersey now? We've had a <laughs> game to talk about it and look at it. It's uh, it's okay. You get used to it. As long as they left the blue note alone, that's part of the, the Part of the tradition of the franchise. Here's Brett Hall at center. I'm not sure if Brett really uh, gives the new unis wave reviews, but it's what's inside them that counts. Greg Adams, Diddick, Joseph down to make the same. Rebound comes out to Pavel Bure, who hasn't seen much ice time of late. Bure and Zombo get tangled up with under three minutes to play. Has to be disappointing for Pavel Bure that he has not, not only turned on the red light, but really hasn't ignited the Vancouver Canucks. He's, he's, he's that kind of player. They rely on him, obviously. It is such a great playoff run last year. A little bit of problems here. The thing the Vancouver Canucks were very leery of was that Ron Seltzer, his agent, they were, you know, when he, when he stayed in Russia and didn't come here, with the bad rapport with the fans and the hockey player and the sourness that the Canadian fans had on the athlete, you know, the Vancouver Canucks tried to quiet things up as, because soon enough the local talk radios were mm. talking about they were getting on him a little bit. Yep. And uh, it was important for them to obviously patch up their franchise player, and that's what they're trying to do. But I'm sure Pavel would, would have liked to really got off to a great start and score some goals early. Well, six years, $22 million. The fans expect you to be here and to produce. And we know he'll produce. It's only a matter of time. And score 60 goals in consecutive seasons, and all of a sudden lose it. This puck comes into the Vancouver bench area. Face off at 2.22 to go. Well, the St. Louis Blues, we talked about the changes that they made since the end of last season. You and I saw them against Dallas. They were a dispirited group. But yeah, now they, they're a new group. Well, they clearly were. You know, they, they lost a lot of mucking and grinding. They lost a lot of character. Don't forget, they had a, a trade last year. They lost Butcher. They lost Bassin and what have you. And, you know, Bob Barry and Ted Sater did an excellent job last year. But, you know, you bring in a guy like Mike, and, and he just has a way of getting everybody thinking on the same page, and they start thinking and believing. You know, right away, Mike goes into St. Louis, and what does he have as the players enter onto the ice, leaving their dressing room? The Stanley Cup. The same thing he did in Philly. The same thing he did in New York. The same thing he did in Chicago. And that's one thing for Mike. He'll get them thinking all the way about how important it is to win a Stanley Cup. Mike close at center. Bill Holder is knocked on his can by Yuri Slager. And his head down for a second and paid for it. Oh, man. Good man. hit by Antosky, too. Antosky nails Guy Carbono. McIntyre bumping with Craig Johnson. Tim Hunter is on with Antosky and McIntyre. Tim Hunter in front, shoot, save, rebound in front. McIntyre can't corral it. Doug Litzner says, let's get this thing out of here. 
Icing will be the call on St. Louis, but they relieve the pressure on Curtis Joseph with 131 to go. Tim Hunter trying to rally up his Vancouver Canucks. Last year, St. Louis, meanwhile, they got off to such a great start. 11-2-2 two two in the first 15 games. I mean, remarkable. Remember at the beginning of the year yeah. how everybody was talking about the St. Louis Blues? And don't forget, Brendan Shanahan is not in uniform for tonight's game. We talked about that a little bit in the early goal. And there's another gun. There's not only a gun, he's a power forward. He's a very, very solid contributor to this hot club. A 50-goal scorer last yep. year. I mean, two years in a row for, for Brendan Shanahan. Is that not right? That's right. Jeez. That's right. And one thing about that great start of the Blues last year, though, it was Brett Hull who told me in, in Hartford in the game we did there, he said, they were 7-1-1 one one at the time. He says, we have to be the worst 7-1-1 one one team in the league. I don't know how we're doing it. And I looked at him like he was nuts. <laughs> but you know what? I found out what he meant later on in the season. But this is a different team, a different squad, a whole new attitude. Look who the assistant captains are for the St. Louis Blues this year. The captain is Brett Hull. Who the assistants are? Al McGinnis mm -hmm. and Guy Carbonell. There you go. 1.14 to go in this hockey game. I imagine the fans that are left can't wait for it to end. The home team down 7 1. Yerky Lume backhands it through the crease. Craig Janney tries to clear and can't. <laughs> Gerald Dinnick keeps it in. The crowd cheering the announcement of the final minute of play. Joseph down. Traffic in front. Barron and Pekka right in front of him. Buck rebounds to the corner and out. Bring on the hyperbaric chamber, Tom. Yeah, it looks like some of the Canucks could use a little resuscitation. I'm sure it'll be a spirited practice for Vancouver tomorrow. Before they hit the road. Under 30 seconds to go. Rick Zombo. Adam Creighton has had another good night tonight. And the St. Louis Blues will go to 2-0 in the early season. They'll have another road game coming up this week before they head home Thursday to open at home against the Los Angeles Kings. And amidst paper airplanes coming down on the ice, the final horn sounds. And Curtis Joseph, who faced 34 Vancouver shots tonight, snapped 33 of them. And the St. Louis Blues had plenty of firepower to win it 7-1. Well, very discouraging for that team, the Vancouver Canucks. I tell you, they just came out flat. Last night's game against Dallas, a 1-1 tie. Uh, that was a blessing on home ice compared to what happened tonight. But uh, Curtis Joseph and the St. Louis Blues, just a tremendous game from really, from start to finish, considering you're taking everything into consideration. The fact that, obviously, they haven't had that much time together. Mm -hmm. They've got a new group. They've got eight new faces. But there's that one common denominator right there. Curtis Joseph, one of the best goaltenders in the National Hockey League. 33, 34 shots on the night, 33 saves. St. Louis from start to finish tonight here in Vancouver. The final score of the Blues win it 7-1. We're not done with our opening night coverage on the Deuce. We'll be back to Vancouver in a moment. Center in St. Louis as Curtis Joseph and the Blues entertain Wayne Gretzky, Yari Curry, and the Los Angeles Kings at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific time. And speak of the devil, there's one of the stars of the game tonight. In fact, I think the star, Curtis Joseph. Curtis, 33 saves on 34 shots. Not bad. Yeah, I'll take that. Uh... Uh, we've been playing well the first two games, and uh, tonight was a great defensive effort. Curtis, one of the things that, that you're going to probably have this year, I mean, you faced, a, what, how many zillion? Like three zillion pucks the last three years. Have you, have you noticed a difference in commitment in terms of team defense so far? I know it's early. Oh, definitely. Uh, Mike Keenan stretches, stresses uh, defense, and, and we picked up some older guys who've won st some Stanley Cups and know what it takes to win. So uh, we definitely are playing a lot better defense. Have you noticed anything with Mike Keenan? I mean, I'm sure when Mike Keenan was signed, you must have been saying, well, Panger got pulled 1,400 times one year. What's going <laughs> to happen to Curtis Joseph? Any thoughts like that? No, I, was, uh, I, welcomed, I welcomed the change. Uh, um, we were giving up far too many shots, and uh, it's hard to win games like that. And uh, Mike Keenan, uh, every goalie he's had has been successful. Uh, so I looked at that, and uh, I welcomed him with open arms. Curtis, I remarked during the game, you told me before the game, that one of the improvements this team made that really pleases you is the quality of face-off men you have. You, you don't have to worry about your team losing the face-offs all the time, particularly in your own end. Could you talk about that? Yeah, we were losing far too many uh, face-offs in our own end. We picked up Adam Creighton and... Uh, Geek Harbinol and those guys have been excellent. And anytime you lose too many draws in your own end, you're going to face a lot of shots. Curtis, w would you mind putting us through a couple of the shots that happened tonight in the 7-1 victory against Vancouver? Sure. Take a look at the monitor. We'll check out your analyzing ability. And Toski on you. Hey, guys. 
Uh, that was the last one there. He came yep, in. Yep. I just tried to stay with him. I thought he might pass it, so I stayed deep, and uh, I tried to make a little five-hole move, and uh, Murray Barron plowed me over again. <laughs> Be before that in the game, we were talking about your, your new goal mask. This one's a great one. Adam shot right off your toque. What happened here? Oh, that, oh, that was, was a shoulder. Okay. That was a shoulder, yeah, yeah. yeah. He had a little mustard on that one, and uh, <laughs> I stayed up with it and uh, got a piece of my elbow. Now, you did take that one in the head as well, right? Oh, I sure did. Uh, I went down a little early, uh, anticipating a little bit uh, too much, I think. Thank goodness for the mask. Curtis, great start. We'll see you on Thursday. The Deuce will be in St. Louis. Congratulations. Thanks, Tom and uh, Darren. Always a pleasure. All right, Curtis Joseph and his St. Louis Blues, a 7-1 winner tonight. Tonight in Vancouver, the Blues go to 2-0 in the season. The Canucks 0-1-1. Bill Pito on the Sports Match. Coming your way next. Good night from Vancouver.